Yeah! Look at that. Yes. Welcome in. I forgot to do the uh, guttural victory scream yesterday. Should I do it? I'll do another one to make up for it. Yeah! Let's go. I'm excited. I also needed to let that out. I just had to get it out of my system like a primal scream therapy. That's a real thing uh, that you do. And I, I could really, really use it right now. Good to be here with you. Ben and Woods, 97.3 The Fan. I just shredded my vocal cords. Uh, I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle. He's the executive producer. Good morning, Paulie. Good morning. Uh, Benjamin Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor and vocal coach. We will talk about that in a moment. Uh, good morning to you, good my morning. friend. Good morning. Yeah, Look first bit of coaching. Don't shred the vocal cords yeah, right. on the first... The first, you know, usage of the day. Need that's, to uh, warm it up, right? It's important. Yeah, you want to do a little warm up. Like do your scale. Sibilance. Sibilance. Do you do a lot of uh, a warm up before your news? Well, you see me before the show every single day where I actually do use my voice much more here. True. Do I ever warm up in the morning? Nope. No. 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 Never once. We all should. It's good for you. I do it before SEALs games because I scream into the microphone. Uh, for you just screamed into the microphone? About three hours. Well, I was off mic. That's true. At the sports arena, the Pachanga Arena San Diego, the mics are so um, uh, vintage. That <laughs> seasoned. <laughs> seasoned. <laughs> that you have to throat them like, and you have to really get on them. No one can ever hear one word I say. It makes me wonder, like, why do you even have me there if no one can hear what I'm saying? But they do, and I'm there, and I'm excited about it. Got a game tomorrow night. Oh, no, I keep thinking today's like Thursday. It's not. Today's Wednesday. Um, got a game on Friday. Excited about that. And uh, But, man, how about our San Diego Padres with a nice, nice three-game winning streak? We will get into that. We're good streaking! That's a streak. That's a streak. Officially a three-game winning streak, and it's, what, April 17th. Can't beat that. Uh, checking many, many boxes is Mike Schilt uh, and the gang. So excited about that. we got a short show for you today. Excited about that. If you like bad radio, this is probably going to be the show for you because we just lose it when we get out early. We lose it. We're like seniors in high school on a half day. I mean, that's exactly how we are. The shows really never go good. I hope today is, is an outlier. And it actually goes well. But weird, kooky things happen. And uh, we'll be here. And thank you guys for being here. Couldn't do it without you. I'm already uh, not optimistic. I'm not either. I don't feel myself. I'm. I'm. I've... Well, you, first of all, you're out of your routine because this is the second straight day I've had to pick you up in the morning yeah. because your car is in the shop. In so the shop. I picked you up and took you and we talked about things on the way to work. Yeah. I'm carless. You like to chat. Usually I'm just silent he on my way to work. He is a bump. I've got woods. He's a bump on a log driving in. Listening to the DA show talk about the best jerseys in history. It made me want to impale myself on a fence post. <laughs> hey, so what's your favorite jerseys of all time? Woods did come up with his favorite jersey, though. Paul, you're a jersey guy. I'm a jersey guy? I mean... <laughs> Stylish, like retro gear. You like good sports memorabilia and jerseys, correct? I, I suppose. You I don't have a own any jerseys. You have a favorite jersey of I all have time. Padres Fantasy Camp jerseys. That's, yeah. Yeah. Those are the only jerseys I have. So but you don't. I guess I'm Jersey guy. Woods actually uh, had one. I had one. I said, that if you're going to do this, do it right. It's the Hartford <laughs> Whalers hockey it's a good sweater. Call. There's nothing better. It's a good call. That being said, you know, they're in what? New York? <laughs> Their show is in New York, yeah. You have, a, you have a, uh, the Knicks are in the playoffs. The Rangers are in the playoffs. The Yankees are playing. The Mets are playing. The draft is coming up. Hey, what's your favorite jersey? I really like the 79 Islanders. Like, what are you guys doing? I'll go old school. I liked the Vancouver Grizzlies. Sure, sure, absolutely. You can do this all day. It's dumb as hell, and it's what's wrong with our business. Now, we're going to do something way more fun. Ben was telling me on the drive-in when he – Finally, I got him to open up a little bit. So what do you got planned today? I said, uh, I've got to do some vocal coaching. I go, excuse me? He goes, yeah, I have to do some vocal coaching. I go, for what? 
Like Ariana Grande? Like what are you who are you vocal coaching? Why would I need to vocal coach Ariana Grande? <laughs> I don't know. She has a vocal Is coach. Delilah starting a singing career. Yeah, well yeah, exactly. Like Manny still takes ground balls. Ariana Grande has a vocal coach. No, but, it's one of my my newer responsibilities at Channel Ten. Okay. Mentoring, you know, some of our newer reporters on delivery. And I I don't really know why I was chosen for the task. Because but you have good delivery. Apparently so. I have no formal training, so I, I'm kind of winging it as I go when yeah. it comes to my vocal coaching. So it's a new anchor or we reporter? We have a new investigative reporter. Ooh, 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 <laughs> I like that. He's a tier one. Craig, shout out to Craig Craig, Harris. good yeah. morning, buddy. Yeah, but he came to us from... Uh, the newspaper business okay. was a great investigative newspaper reporter. Oh, I love that. And is making the transition to television. So he's he's dialed in on the stories and okay. asking the tough questions and digging and records, you know, searches, you know, the real the real meat of journalism. The like that's why you get it. If you're gonna be a journalist, I feel like that would be the best way to do it. Like the guy outside of Sir, sir, why did you accept illegal payments? I don't. I couldn't do That'd it. That'd be tough. It's tough, bro. I could write the story under a pseudo under a pseudonym that nobody knows who I was, right? Like, but to be the guy waiting, uh, sir, sir, could you please comment? Like that makes me. It makes my skin crawl. So he's going to deliver these stories, but he needs a little help because he doesn't it's have television, any, it's though. Television. So you still have to package it up nicely and okay. give it a little bit of uh, oomph, pizzazz. Yeah, pizzazz. A little little oomph. When I think pizzazz. You know Huzzah! Who, you know what I think of? Right there. Yours truly, <laughs> yeah. of course. Riz, Pizzazz. <laughs> All of the above. Here. So so we're driving in this morning, and I go... You're so, eating away at my credibility here. <laughs> so I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So how does this work? And he's like, I don't, he goes, let's print out a story. You deliver it. I go, because I have no experience. He goes, you deliver it. And then I'll vocal coach you. I go, I'm all the way in. All right. So what's the uh, what's the setting? Is this like so, radio host delivery? No, TV. So this is for TV script like reading, like vo voiceover, playing. yeah, voiceover, voiceover, some B roll, and on camera. We worked in the studio, and then we worked with a script, and we went through. And again, I'm making this up as I go. But like last week, I worked on like picking a word in each line to okay. give a little extra emphasis to. To you know, just make sure that the important words, the action words, the ones that you want to get across, stand out in your delivery a little bit. Okay, so I'm a little bit nervous. All right, but yeah. you've handed me this story. The and, script is in the okay. anchor. You're sitting at the anchor desk and you're reading. This is actually a story that Kimberly Hunt read last night okay. on Channel. So 10. try to do this as if the cameras are rolling. Correct, right? because yeah. they are on YouTube. Right. You can watch this and on YouTube. Three, two and one. Kaboo will return to the Del Mar Fairgrounds this summer after a three-year hiatus. It comes after the city of Solana Beach settled a lawsuit over the music festival's planned return. In the suit, the city claimed the board for the fairgrounds overlooked considerations such as air pollution, public safety, and traffic when approving its return. The agreement includes terms to manage those concerns. With the settlement, Kaboo will return to the fairgrounds this September. Details about the lineup have not been released. Okay, not bad. Um, I really liked in the middle there. Can I can I see yeah, the script sure, a little absolutely. bit? Yeah, you you punched really well. Let's see. Uh, overlooked. Overlooked. When you said overlooked, it was you gave it a bit of a surprise. Like, how could you overlook something right, like that? Like air the pollution. City, city claimed the board for the fairgrounds overlooked <gasps> considerations such as air pollution. You can carry a lot of information and feeling just in the way that you say something. And I don't know that everyone realizes that. Now, maybe it's obvious to some people, but I've worked with reporters in the past that that don't seem to grasp how important it is to use their inflections and vocal changes to carry a little bit more. You can because these stories are quite short. Yeah, they're I mean, short. This is a probably about a twenty-five second reader at most. You know, in a newspaper, this might be. You might, you know, might have seven, eight paragraphs right. for that story. But in TV, it's you really keep it quick. Tight. And to carry that information, it does require some work on the part of the anchor using their voice and, and delivery to get the message across as, as much as the words sometimes. It would make me so nervous to be coached by him. It would make me so nervous. But if I had to have a coach, I think I'd rather have you than some guy that looks at you and goes, you're an idiot. Part of it is also um, enthusiasm yeah. and, and just engagement and i know it's can be a bit 
cliche for the news anchor to be really into every story, sure. and I, I would never encourage that. But at the same time, you do not want to read a news. You don't want to listen to a news anchor who's just boring and just reading. No, Kabu will return to the Del Mar Fairgrounds this summer after a three-year hiatus. Comes after the city of Solana Beach settled a lawsuit. You need you to be, give it. Some... You need to be more enthusiastic than you would be just kind of in a normal, real-world situation. Not over the top, but it's got to be a little bit more. And one of the things we're going to work on today in our vocal coaching is I'm going to have them do some Padres highlights. Oh. To, like, okay, here's the here's the here's here's where you go big. And then when you do your normal investigative story, that'll seem easy because you can back off. But in highlights, you're really going strong. Like, this is excitement. This is fun. This mm, is sports. Mm, mm. Try this. And then when you're reading a story about, you know, the city sending out water bills inaccurately, <laughs> right. it'll sound much better when you just give it a touch of that that sports oh, read, too. I like that. So, so it's like, yeah, you're, he's hitting off the tee today. And then once you get in the game, exactly. the muscle memory will take over. And you will start barreling balls to the gap. Nah, this I could like backfire that. horribly. Terrible. Reggie Miller's all. looking good. He shoots a three, and it's good. <laughs> Later, he gets the rebound, passes it to the man, shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> Hey, Craig, I love that you have all these different <laughs> catchphrases. That's great. Passes it to it's, the man. It's, Craig, it's great that you have all these catchphrases for your stories. That being said, it's the lead up to them is what's really been the problem. You can't say passes it to the man. You need to know who, the who passed it and who it, he passed it to. Who is the man in this scenario? It's... When I'm that, not worried about Craig's knowledge of his oh, stories. Yeah, He's yeah. dialed in there. Locked this in. is simply the last, the cherry on top, the delivery of an already quality story on television. That's fantastic. The Associated Press oh. of the All-American First Team in College ba Baseball oh. was announced today at Utah's seven-foot sophomore center Andrew Bogot was the leading vote getting, receiving 61st place votes. <laughs> the panic. <laughs> you just, when you hear... When you, you know what, just... Cut. When you see, when <laughs> you done. we watched that kid die, like we watched him die. It was like it's like the first like funny internet video I ever, ever remember That's seeing. It. That was it. It was on what was that? E bombs world. E bombs yeah. world. <laughs> it was Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, that thing. And boom goes the dynamite. And that's when I really said, you know, this internet is pretty badass. <laughs> it really is pretty badass. If you're if you're aggregating things like this. I'm all in. Charlie bit me. Charlie bit me. Uh, E-bombs world. There was one that was very dirty. I'm here for the... Remember that? No, it was called Man This is Awkward. And it was one of the funnier things I'd ever read. E-bombs world. Where, how are those guys? Where are those guys at? It's still a thing. I hope they're billionaires. E-bombs world. I hope that they are so filthy rich. I don't even know what an e bomb is. Uh, nobody did. I just, <laughs> it's still around. Is it still around? It doesn't look the same, but it's chocolate it's rain. So. Remember <laughs> chocolate rain? Chocolate <laughs> rain. <laughs> Holy the crap! Numa Numa uh, video. Oh my lord! Yeah. Chocolate rain. I hope everyone's doing good. I hope that Tay's on day was his name. I hope Tay's doing well. I hope that sportscaster is. Alive and well and thriving, <laughs> and that his wife has never seen the internet ever. Is that the best pickup line of all time? Like, hey, how you doing? My name's Mike. Oh, no, hi, Mike. Nice to meet you. Here, this is me. Just so you know now, this is actually me. You're in. Like, you're going to get a first date. It's like, uh, did did Carving Guy's wife ever see Carving Guy video in the past? 100%. That's something I would love to ask Carving Guy someday. I really, really would. Uh, all right, let's get into... Last what really game. happened on that Thursday here at Augusta High School that led to Chris Wood's death? What the f is that? The f you want to talk about I'm quality news reporting? Country ass f***ed up town. <laughs> Flying in my mouth. The f I can't see pollen. Let's get the f out of this country, mother. F I can't even see me. I would have promoted that that would have been my number now, one his, his uh on-camera delivery was a little pukey <laughs> which very, is something you what want really to win, happened you want to win what on. really happened on that thursday here at augusta <laughs> it's the best yeah the you don't uh, craig if you're listening don't be a puker kaboo will return to the delmar fairgrounds this summer after a three-year hiatus 
You don't want that. No, you don't want that. Don't be a puker. Try to coach that out of anybody that, uh, that uses that style. All right, we're going to set the menu. Was fun, dude. We're Holy cow. Set the menu. Now that we've all been vocally coached up, should be a great short show today. <laughs> yeah. As we lead you into early Padres baseball, going for the sweep of the Brewers, we've got our Padres uh, wrap-up coming up as well. But we'll set the menu when we come back. And we'll pay off the incorporator a little bit early. Jesse Agler on television last night, working in our incorporator word of Arenaceous. He was grinding on it. Grinding on it. I Woo. thought it worked pretty well. You'll, I did too. You can hear for yourself when we come back with Bennett Woods after a check of traffic. Kelly Danick. On a Wednesday morning here on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fam.
All right, let's uh, get the menu out quickly so we oh, can yeah. uh, get to our incorporator audio Sir, from what yesterday. Are the, uh, specials today? Specials today are a Pondre 6 3 win over the Milwaukee Brewers. We'll be uh, serving that as our. Our first course coming up here at the bottom of the hour in our Padres wrap-up. Uh, we've got a couple of our regular menu items, Take on Woods, Don't Do This, in our 7 o'clock hour. Uh, we just received word that one of the specials is off the menu for today. <laughs> we just ran out. <laughs> we just ran out of Adam Jones. Just ran out. Unfortunately. Uh, we are going to get AJ. some more back in stock tomorrow. I uh, went to 86, <laughs> Adam Jones off the menu. Yeah. Uh, he is on a... Surprise flight yes. across the Atlantic Ocean, like he normally is, was supposed to be about six or seven hours ago, but he got a little delayed, so he's not going to be landing. But he said, We'll do it tomorrow instead. But we will have one Brett Boone join us from the Brett Boone Boone-y. podcast at 8 35. That'll be the main course, as it were, as we lead into no time for dessert, unfortunately, as we will be out of here a little bit early today, giving way to Sam Levitt for the Eco Water SoCal pregame show, which starts at 9-10 this morning as the Padres play their first uh, early eastern part of the country game of the season and go for a three-game sweep of the Milwaukee Brewers later this morning. Uh, it's it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. and And they have not named a starter yet. Uh, I have Milwaukee not seen Bruce. Pat Murphy name his starter. Now, early in the series, I had seen Freddie. It was Freddie Peralta's turn in the rotation. I go, okay, well, he's he's tough. We talked about that. You want to get the first said, two if you can. Let's get the first two if you can. Because Freddie is is nasty. But apparently, uh, Pat Murphy is a big believer in as much extra rest early in the season as possible. And even though they don't have another starter, he'd rather give Peralta that extra day of rest as opposed to throw him. You know, in a game where you don't want to get swept no, by a team that you might one. be competing for a playoff spot against later in the season. If it were me, I'd be throwing Freddie Peralta in this game and trying not to get swept by the San Diego Padres. But I'm not Pat Murphy, and he's probably going to be going with some sort of bullpen game against the Padres later this morning. Yeah, I thought that was a little odd myself. Um, and I think the dozens of people at Milwaukee's ballpark were very disappointed uh, if they were expected to see Freddie Peralta. What the hell is going on in Milwaukee? I'm sure you guys have noticed the last couple of, of nights, you can hear people's conversations. Like, oh, yeah. did you call the guy about the insurance yet? You haven't? <laughs> I don't know if we I don't know if we need renter's insurance. I mean, straight up, like conversations ah. in the crowd. What the hell's going on? The Bucks are done for the season. They're gearing up for the playoffs, right? I'm assuming that the Milwaukee Bucks are in the yes, playoffs. Yes, but Giannis is out, out. Okay. which is going to hurt them against the Indiana Pacers. So are people so depressed about <laughs> Giannis being out they didn't want to come to the Brewers well, I, game? You we know, were a good team and an exciting team? As Jesse mentioned, the weather was really bad. Now they've got a roof at the ballpark. <laughs> they got a roof! Perhaps getting to the ballpark seemed like beating. it was just a beating. Plus it was leaking all over the place oh my God. inside American Family Field. How come other places don't keep up their ballparks the way we do? I saw a, a, th- a picture of the Dodger Stadium press box the other day, you guys, where it said, because the, the rain was pretty gnarly in L.A., it delayed mm-hmm. us a couple games. They said the water was leaking into the press box on people's laptops. They're sitting there punching up stories. They had a they took a, 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 a grocery bag, Polly, like a plastic grocery bag, <laughs> duct taped it around the ceiling to catch the water that was dripping in the Dodger's press box. Mm. I mean, it's it's staggering to me that a place like that is is now. I I don't know apart. if we're being um, too hard on Milwaukee. I, a lot of places in baseball Mondays and Tuesdays don't draw huge crowds. Uh, you know, Padres are one of the exceptions that have a great fan base. Maybe that's what I'm used to. Yeah, well, I, you know, and Craig Elston made the point on Twitter. And I thought it was a good one yesterday that that Padres fans notice that when they play at home on Mondays and Tuesdays, they've got big crowds and they've got supportive fans, and then they go somewhere else and. I think as a player, you go, it's nice to play for the San Diego Padres with a fan base that cares and Drives shows up home. because yeah. the alternative is this. And you go uh, in Milwaukee and you play in a mausoleum indoors, quiet, leaking, quiet no atmosphere. It's not as fun. It would not be as fun to be a baseball player to play for the Milwaukee Brewers as it would be to play for the San Diego Padres. I mean, there is absolutely no question about it. Monday night. I mean, we were there. We threw out the first pitch on a what? Tuesday night? Tuesday night, yeah. You couldn't even get a hot dog, man. Like, after it was like, oh my God, it was like Coachella walking through the concourse on a Tuesday night. Then you that's go not on the Ben and Woods effect. That was right. the uh, poncho effect. But, like, I'm, 
even look around baseball and like a Friday night in Cincinnati yeah. or a Friday night at Dead. San Diego. Dead. The sunset, yeah. the city connect, the house band, yeah. beer well, fest. It's a party. People are it's like, amazing. You're in Milwaukee. I'm like, yeah, what better? And again, the Brewers are a, a good team they with are. exciting young they players. They went into this like, series with the best winning, winning percentage in the National League. Yeah. It's probably offensive to people from Milwaukee, but what else do you have to do? Yeah, what else are you doing? Like, it's, that's what I game. think. I mean, you know. I don't know. It's always that was always the argument here when attendance was down. It was well, so I mean, much. You look, there's so much to do. <laughs> the no, opposite, yeah. the product on the field is worth trekking your ass out to the ballpark. For. Let's uh, let's get to the incorporator here before the bottom of the hour. So Jesse Ackler joined us as he does each and every Tuesday, and we got our word from our, our YouTube stream yesterday. Do you remember who submitted it here? Uh, I can't remember. Here's the, the name. setup Sorry. from from yesterday with you Jesse. One of our tier ones submitted this in the chat, and I like this. Uh, The word itself, I don't think it's going to be too difficult for Erinaceous. E-R-I-N-A-C-E-O-U-S. Erinaceous. Always fun with the definition like or relating to the hedgehog. Erinaceous. Hedgehog. Which is amazing. Like, (laughs) what a weird... How get its own adjective? It's, yeah. (laughs) So, uh, Jesse went with, as we discussed last week, I call it the directed conversation and started turning his attention to creatures of the northern Midwest and mascots of the region with as, mud. This was on television as last night. the rain started to fall, yep. he said the woodland creatures are very yeah, happy. You can sort of, if, you, if you're paying attention, yep. <laughs> you can sort of see it coming. And in the top of the seventh, he, uh, he got to his point that I think he was trying to make all along. Michigan guy. Michigander. There you go. Played his college ball at the University of Cincinnati. Bearcats. A lot of erinaceous animals up in this park. If your bearcats, your hedgehogs, your wolverines. groundhogs, wolverines. wolverines, yeah, badgers. I was going to say. Oh, did, did can't say forget badgers? the badgers. Yeah. He's fantastic. Yeah, and <laughs> when you can get like mud didn't miss a beat. Like he was no, part of the conversation. Of the that is an effective bearcats incorporator usage That's yesterday amazing. for Jesse Agler. Well done, as he always does. Yep. All right, we will come back. We will get to our Padres recap or wrap up highlights of last night's six to three win. Great performance by Dylan Cease. We'll talk about all of it coming up next year on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
All right, there's more like it. Padres playing good baseball, and we're expecting, at least I am, when I sit down and listen or watch a game, I'm expecting it to now go fairly well for your San Diego Padres. Felt, Didn't take long, right? I, I felt pretty good, you know, uh, winning that the the game the night before, coming back, and then having Dylan Cease on the mound. I've been very impressed with Dylan Cease so far. Would I love him to not walk, guys? Sure. Yeah, I think eventually that comes back well. <laughs> It didn't come back to bite Blake Snell last year. And so far, it has not come back to really bite Dylan Cease yet. This this wants to work on it. He's a funny, funny cat, dude. Like, he's so deadpan. Did you hear the post? Very dry. He's very dry. Did you hear the post game with I him? I did. And they asked him, he's like, what would you think about your slider? And he goes, nah, it, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. And Mud's like, well, did, like uh, well, what can you do? And he's like, I don't want to tell anybody what I'm working on. It's so good. He's like, I've got a couple of ideas. I'm not going to share them. I thought it was brilliant. I was like, you know what? I kind of like this guy. Typically, I like a little bit more personality, but I said, oh, no, that's his personality. Dry and deadpan. I get the sense he's a little tired of people bringing up his poem about his slider. slider. Yeah. If you don't want people to bring up your poem that you wrote about a slider, don't write a poem about your slider. And it will never be brought up. I mean, it's not like you wrote it last week. It was like years ago. Yeah, I know. But like, you know. We're having a fre- fresh fun with it now that he's changed it was, teams. It was fun. It was funny when Mud said, how was your slider Oh, slider? He also, um, and I say it was pointed out in uh, the UT newsletter this morning, he's been really appreciative of the defense behind him. Very the White so. Sox had a horrifically bad defense. And I don't think you, you necessarily realize what, you know, as a major league pitcher, that how difficult that is. Like you get, you finally get someone to hit a a, a ball right at someone, and you're going, oh, I got out of the inning, and they they botch the play, and now you've got a, now you're in a tougher situation. You got a tougher batter coming up. They've made plays behind him, and he's really enjoying, I think, being on the San Diego Padres. And he, I don't think he's even seen the best of the Padres defense yet, but he's definitely I mean, appreciating. Guys, that. somewhat out of position. I mean, how about Profar with that pick? Unreal. <laughs> that play at first, I'm like, he must have just crapped his pants. That ball was skull. What'd you call the runner, lineup change? Base runner right in front of him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Screened completely. I mean, that ball is right under my legs. Yeah, uh, and- Profar getting the start at first. And we'll have an update on Jake Cronenworth coming up as well from what we've heard. But first, we'll check traffic and then our Padres wrap up highlights of last night's win next year on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. It continues to be a quiet one around the county, guys. Start to see the usual slowing in the usual spots, but at least no incidents or accidents getting in your way. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Wood, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. I love winning, man. I f- love winning. You hear what I'm saying? It's like better than losing. Oh, my God, I'm so stiff. <laughs> <laughs> Miss any of the Padres win yesterday? Ben and Woods didn't. What up, crew? We've got you covered with all of the highlights. I like it when the Padres win. Yeah! 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 It's the Padres wrap-up, presented by Hamul Casino. With thrilling slots and tables and all the best rewards, Hamul Casino has all the fun you're looking for. Hamul Casino, fun above all else. Yeah! Give me a do damage. Do damage! 1-1 1-1 to Manny. Ground ball right back off Wade Miley. Off his shin. Karam's over to first base. Bauer is going to tag Machado out. Wade Miley is on the ground. Xander Bogarts was able to score on the play. Padres have a 1-0 lead. Second and third. One out top of the first inning. Swung on. Driven down the left field line. And well hit. Is it going to be fair? It is gone. Home run for Hassan Kim. Padres with a 4-0 lead here in the first. Here's Bowers, left-hand hitting first baseman, swings first pitch and hits a line drive down in the right field corner. And now the Tatis Jr. has a long way to go to run this one down. Let's see if they're going to send Adamas. They're going to send him. Here comes the cutoff throw. It's going to be cut off and held on to. It's a two-out RBI double for Jake Bowers, and the Brewers are on the board. 4-1 Padre lead. Swing and a miss, strike three. Foul tip actually held on by Luis Campusano for the punch out. Seven punch outs on the night. Two in this inning for Dylan Cease. That'll do it for the Brewers here in the sixth. Next pitch, little blooper in the right field. This may fall coming on hard as right fielder, but it's going to fall in front of him for a single. One run is in. Two runs are, excuse me, one run is in. And Fernando, as the other runners have to hold up. And the Padres they are able to extend their lead to 5-1 to one on the RBI bloop single by Luis Campusano. Next pitch, ground ball to the shortstop. Could be two over to second for one, over to first base. Not in time. Jerkson Profar is going to score as Jackson Merrill was able to 
stay out of the double play. 6-1 Padre lead now. On the RBI fielder's choice by Jackson Merrill. Count now full. 3-2 pitch. Little looper in the right field. It's going to be a base hit. It goes off the glove of Fernando Tatis Jr. One run is in as the ball comes back into the infield. And the Padre lead is now cut down to 6-2. Ground ball to the left side. Rosario has it over to second base for one. Tries to get for the double play, but it's not going to be in time. Weimer is going to score. Padres lead is now 6-3. to three. That's not happening. He's staying at second base now. Still two down. Pitch to Adonis. Fly ball to left field. Zokar going back. Still going back. Reaches up to make the catch at the base of the wall. And that'll do it. The Padres hang on to win this one by a score of 6-3. to three. Wandy Peralta comes into the ball game. And gets the job done on a fly ball. Nice running catch by Azokar to flag it down. Padres have guaranteed themselves a series win. They've guaranteed themselves a winning road trip. First of all, his stuff is so nasty. You know, sometimes you get the opportunity to sit back and just appreciate when somebody does something spectacular on a baseball field. Um, and man, he threw some pitches that are like, that's, that's just nasty stuff. You know, exploding fastball and dirty slider. and. Mike Schilt on Dylan C. Six innings, two hits, one earned run, seven strikeouts, did walk five, but uh, he's just been close to unhittable so far this year. Well, really, that's who Dylan C. is. He's a very difficult pitcher to to hit, and that's been the case so far. Gets his second win with the San Diego Padres. Padres won three in a row, five of their last six, and as Scan mentioned, their third straight series win already clinched. He'll go for the sweep later this morning and try to get out of Milwaukee with a four-game winning streak, something you might remember they had trouble doing last year until September. Yeah. Take yeah. care of that in April as well right here. That would be nice today. 100%, Benny. Uh, Dylan Cease, you can't say enough good things about what he did. His uh, opponent batting average right now is, is leading the National League in a, in a stable full of brilliant, brilliant pitchers in the National League. Uh, opponent's batting average is 130. Fifth in ERA with 199 and uh, tied for fifth with 27 punchies uh, on the season for Dylan Cease. What a brilliant, brilliant move that was by A.J. Preller at the stroke of midnight, essentially, to get Dylan Cease. And I shudder to think where our rotation would be without him. And if he keeps pitching like this, yeah, you get to a playoff series. He is your he's your guy. That's the guy you roll with. You want to get that first one out of the way. He's got the nastiest stuff on the staff. He throws harder uh, than our, all of our other starting pitchers. He is he's dirty, man. Now again, I, I'm going to give he survived, pitched brilliantly. He also had Angel Hernandez behind the dish. Now Angel gave some to the Padres, and he took away some from Dylan Cease. Dylan Cease in one AB had to throw like five strikes, and he was visibly getting frustrated. But you know, he got the he got the I survived Angel Hernandez uh, t shirt last night. Came away with a win, and uh, just a really nice pitching performance from him. And uh, again, like you said, backed up with good defense and everything else. One hundred and ten pitches uh, went through six innings, which was important because the Padres bullpen had been used the previous couple of days, so they were able to go with. I don't want to say the lower leverage guys, but Morahone, then Matsuli only had to, to get one out, and then Brito, and they did bring in Peralta for the last two outs in the ninth inning. But you were able to stay away from Robert Suarez, uh, didn't have to pitch in the game yesterday after he had been used three of the previous four games. So always good when you can get a big enough lead and not have to go to your highest leverage relievers every single game. Uh, but the Padres get the 6-3 to three win. If there was one complaint, probably should have won by more, given the opportunities yeah. that they had created for themselves against Wade Miley and the Milwaukee bullpen, and they only went 4-15 for 15 with runners in scoring right. position. Better than 1-15, for 15, though. Or 0-15. You know, and they did score six runs, which is uh, a number you'd take every single day of the calendar year, uh, essentially, if you're looking to an offense. But they... They certain they had. I think there was a streak where they went 0 for seven in the middle of the game with runners in scoring position. They had the bases loaded and one out. They had a runner at third and less than two outs twice and didn't get the runner in. That's tough. Those are the ones that 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 typically come back to haunt you. And again, and did last season. It did last season. And the the bend but don't break is is fine. It's absolutely fine. You you walked out of there. You got a victory. You scored early. And you put the pressure on Milwaukee to come up and and maybe force their a, a Bs a little bit. Um, as you're down, you know, they blink. They blinked 
and it was four nothing. Just like that. I mean, it was the quickest four runs I feel like I've ever I've seen us score in forever. And so encouraging that Manny uh, is hitting the ball hard again and taking out pitchers with uh, every swing. I mean, rockets up the middle. Um, there was a lot to be encouraged about last night. Ten game hitting streak for Manny Machado, and it makes such a difference in the lineup. I remember early in the season when it felt like you had a couple guys hot, but they were all separated, and you could never get a bunch of hits in a row. Well. Last night, you had uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., three for four, setting the table and ended up scoring two runs. He also walked. Then Jerickson Profar has been hot, one for three with a walk. So he was on twice. He scored twice. You had Manny with a hit and a walk and that 10-game hitting streak. And, of course, ha Sung Kim with a three-run home run so close. and a walk yeah. coming through. Those are now guys in the order who all seem to be you know, coming around at the same time. Uh, Campy, after a bit of a slump, last couple of ga- games, I think he swung the bat a little bit better. Jackson Merrill finally didn't get a hit. Is it time I, to be concerned about Jackson Merrill? Well, I, I want to get <laughs> him credit, More though. reps, maybe, what, in well, AAA. I, I think one of the hardest things to do for a young player is realize that even when you don't get a hit, you can contribute. And he and did. He did. He had a fielder's choice where he hustled out of the box, beat the return throw at first base to avoid the double play and drive in a run. So an RBI and he had a stolen base. So you're still adding, you know, value to your team, even on a quote unquote off day at the plate for Jackson Merrill. And by the way, Pat Murphy, a lot of respect. I thought for Jackson Merrill, I think twice he went to his bullpen to get a lefty to because knowing how good Jackson's been and how dangerous he is. He gave him two very different look lefties. He got a big side armor and he got more of an overhand guy just to, and that would give any left-handed hitter some trouble when the other team is already game planning around you and against you uh, wherever your spot in the lineup comes up. Yeah, no question. I got a a tweet last night from our buddy Cole and he's in the chat this morning too. Wanted to talk about Xander Bogarts and (laughs) this surprised even me. He said, but can we please make a talking point out of Xander hitting into double plays? I think we're all sick of watching it. Not that it's going to happen. How many more runs would we have had each game if he switched spots with Merrill or was benched? And I said, look, I can probably handle that for you right here on Twitter without making it a talking point on the air, which I just did. But I said, he shouldn't hit into double plays, and you're not going to bench a $280 million player. You're just not. That, as much as you love it or hate it, it's not going to happen. So we need to you know, watch that from your memory. Would it surprise you that that was his first double play he grounded into this season? It would surprise me. It surprised me, yeah. me too when I looked it up. No, because I think the Padres have hit into seven or eight of them in the last three games. It, bro, but yes. it, it wasn't him it that's wasn't, been doing it. It wasn't Xander. Now, batting leadoff does yeah. lessen your chances of hitting into a double so, play. And that's what I was going to say to Cole and everybody else listening. Like It's, it's not ideal <laughs> to have numbers like Xander Bogarts has. In the leadoff. He did start the game off with a knock yesterday, which, again, that's that's what you want to do. Started the most important rally of the most game. Most important rally of the game. So give credit where credit is due. I said it before the season started because he is a bit of a ground ball guy. I said, where do you hit him? Well, you hit him fifth, and now the sacks are jacked, and he's coming up in that spot? And I know there's been a lot of, of uh, dissension about it. Here's what my honest take is. I don't think you'd move him at all. Because it's working. Like, we're winning ball games. I don't think it's something where you look at one individual player and say, yeah, you're you're scuffling a little bit. But the team is winning. And, again, he started off the game with a knock, came around to score. We got four runs on the board in the first inning. I don't think you go in and, you know, start tinkering uh, and, and move the, the lineup around. Well, now, eventually, maybe, maybe he slides down. Somebody had said to me, well, he won't do it. He's not going to go hit seventh because of his ego. And I said, I I mean, that may be the case. This team certainly feels if he wouldn't do that, then that's a problem. That's a problem for, I think, a lot of people. Like, you got your money. You're here now. You need to do what you got to do to help us win. He has shown no, you know, he, he, does, he has said nothing to where, like, no, nah, man, like, I, I don't want to hit seventh. He said it last year at spring training. We've held his feet to the fire about it. That he, you know, he likes hitting second, but he doesn't get big numbers there. But he's got his bag. Like hit where we need you to hit. But for right now, while you're winning ball games, don't 
don't mess with anything. Yeah, I think it's important what you said. Like the team is winning ball games. Yeah. Now they're eleven and nine. That's slightly over five hundred through twenty games. But even in those nine losses, like they aren't really getting blown out ever. Like they're right. in. Oh yeah. Even the crappy games, the games that we come in, you know, you're like, oh, that was predictable after scoring twelve runs the night before. Like they're still, uh, you know, what does Mud always say? A bloop and a blast, or they're within slam range. Like they're in almost every single ball game. So uh, it is working. A hundred percent. And and. And, you know, there's there's it's a it's an interesting talking point in the chat. You know, people are saying you know, somebody said, I don't like him at leadoff because he doesn't have enough speed. I, I think I think those days are gone. You know, Jeff, well, those honestly. days might be gone, but I will make the counterpoint here. What do you need from your leadoff guy? You want them to get on base. Get on base. And in last night's lineup, there were literally eight guys with a better on base percentage than Xander Bogart. Yeah. Well, seven. He's got two points higher than Luis Camposano. But you could go. He's at two eighty six OBP. Yeah, you need it needs to be higher. Tatis is three seventy nine. Profar is four thirteen. Kim is three forty one. Even after a slow start, a Manny's at three thirty seven. You're not going to bat him lead off. Jackson Merrill's four oh eight. Uh, Eggie's even three twenty one. And Ozokar's four twelve. I mean, you could choose literally anyone that has been getting on base more than Xander. Now you don't, but you don't mess with it now. Right, you agree with that at least? Like you don't, you don't need to go jigger the lineup when I, you I just score six you, runs. You, you wait until you start losing games. No, no, but I, I just think I think with Xander, the, why not be proactive? Well, the track record, the track record. You ha- if you're going to spend two eighty on a guy, you kind of have to believe I, I, in. The I'm track not saying record. you're benching Xander. I agree no, with you no, there. No. He's got to hit him, hit his way out of his slump. I don't know that it has to be out of the leadoff spot no. though. And I don't know that just because you're winning, you go, I can't change anything. That kind of I, I, that kind of mentality just leads you to stop winning soon. If you're not Who says? It's working. You never F you with don't the F with the winning streak, Ben. You don't and let you know, if he needs a day off, fine. It's a different story. He got one last week and Jackson Merrill hit lead off. You do that. Interesting to see what's gonna happen today, especially considering the status of Jake Cronenworth. We will uh, hear from Mike Schilt about that and play some Take on Woods when we return here on 97.3 The Fan.
All right. Class is in session. Your teacher is Ben Higgins. Ben, tell everybody how to fan. Professor Higgins. Professor Higgins. Uh, when you talk about, I've seen in the last seven days, quotes, we need, quote, we need to send Manny Machado down to work on his swing. That's one. Ten game hitting streak. Send Hassan Kim down to work on his swing or bench him. Bench Xander Bogarts until he starts hitting, which is a little bit counter. It doesn't make a lot of sense. You can't, you're not going to hit your way out of a slump on the bench. You, we have to, I think, as a fan base and as a, a baseball fans in general, you got to wipe that from your, you got to wipe it from your lexicon. You got to wipe it from your verbiage, right? Does this happen with other sports? I don't other know. Other fan bases, other teams? Uh, yes, it, I've definitely seen it. Like I've, do, I've do seen Warriors teams. fans, if, if Curry has like two or three games bench in a row him. where he's only hitting like one or two threes, shots just not fall under the, well, yeah, you got to bench him. I see Katie like, Wu. No. I see Katie Wu def- doing this a lot and defending. You know, she's a beat writer for the Cardinals. I see like, hey, we're not going to bench Arenado. It's just not going to happen. There's a certain, and you can argue the merits of right and wrong with it, in our, sometimes our optimistic sports brain, what do we say? Hey, whatever's best for the team, right? That's, we all say that. Hey, you need to do what's best for the team. Well, there's also the reality of the sports, the business world of sports, where it's like, nah, dude, you're making $25 million a year. We're going to let you hit your way out of this thing. I, I just like to apply pure logic, logic. to the situation. That's, all, that's and that, all I'm and asking that is, for. On a Major League Baseball team, you have 13 position players. One of them is a backup catcher. So you've got nine starters. Essentially, you have three guys who aren't playing on any given day who could replace up to three of your six players in the lineup that you don't feel are performing up to snuff. Correct. Well, first of all, those three players probably aren't that good to begin with. Otherwise, they would be starting for your team or another team. Yes. They're not... If you have three players that are just so unbelievably incredible, like ready to go, they, they should be starting every day. Now that's a different story. They, that's a different story. And that's but that's, happened. that's very rare, but that it's does rare, happen. But it happens. It's not the case with the San Diego Padres it's right not. now. You normally have four or five guys at any given moment in ba- you are kind of struggling. Hitting is Mike Schilt loves to say, hardest thing to do in the world of sports is hitting a major league baseball. It's not just Mike Schilt. You know, a lot of people say everybody it, but says he, he said it many times already this season. So you're going to have even even your star players who have good seasons are going to go through slumps where they are not hitting great. You can't just replace everyone who's slumping every time with your bench players who aren't that good. It That doesn't make any sense. So the most logical thing to do, especially when you have star players who have over a, a long period of time proven their effectiveness you just kind of let them let them roll with it. And, well, yes, you can give a day off here or there for a guy who's, who's st- scuffling. Injuries are a factor that we never fully know about sure. how a guy's feeling. But if a guy's feeling fine and, you know, is trying to work his way out of a slump, generally he's going to play, especially if he's a, a star-level player. And that's just the way it's going to be. So – you can kind of forget the talk about benching Xander Bogarts. Yeah, almost. He's not, or, he's not or, getting benched, nor should he get or benched. Or Manny last week or Hassan Kim. I mean, again, you have to really think about your options. And, and I just got a tweet uh, from Landy, and Landy says, saying track record is basically the same as saying, look at the back of our baseball cards. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why you paid Xander Bogarts. You paid him for his track record. You didn't pay him that money because you liked the cut of his jib. You know, he looks cool. That's You paid him because he's produced this, 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 and this, and you expect him to produce that. And if he doesn't produce that 15, I'm going to get 20 games into the season, it's not a guy that, like, you may give him a day, and he, gave, he got a day against L.A., which I disagreed with, fully disagreed with. I said Xander Bogart should be in the lineup, even if you're slumping, even if you're scuffling, if you're healthy, you got to play against the Dodgers. And we lost that game, right? And so I disagree with that fully. But yeah, man, there's, there's, he needs to hit his way out of it. That's the only way it's going to yeah, work. I mean, you, now, you, like you said at the break, in the year 2031, if he's not hitting, you consider benching him for your hot young sure. prospect, yes. right? And, and he's a bench guy. But now you just don't 
you don't, and, and you don't mess with. And hopefully your coaches have a good enough pulse on the team and go, there's something truly wrong with Xander right now. Like his swing is just doesn't look right. It's off. Let's take a couple of days and do work on something. But most of the time, you're looking at a guy and goes, yeah, he, he looks fine. It's just not It's not happening it's not for happening, him right yeah. now. And then so you just ride with players like that. Yeah, you have to. And as much as, again, think about our in our in our kind of warped sports brains that we all have from time to time. Hey, man, you're not doing the job. You need to be on the bench it's for the good of the team. I, You're not wrong. Like, there's, there's many. We've had many players. You're telling me Angels fans at the end of Pujols' career or the end of at Tigers fans, at the end of Miggy Cabrera's career, you're like, oh, my God. Like, we've got to have – like, is he taking at-bats from Torkelson or is Pujols taking at-bats from – Nolan Shanuel, whatever, like whoever your hot prospect is. The answer is undoubtedly yes. Right right is. now, Xander is taking at bats away from Matt Batten, who was called up Correct. yesterday. Correct, man. Yeah. So you really you you gotta fast forward the tape on that a little bit. And and when you think about it, it and I know it's a knee jerk reaction, I have them all the time as well. And trust me, I was screaming at my TV last night. But again, the only way like you hate to say, oh, well, we're stuck with it, but to be honest, you're kind of stuck with every long-term contract you have. It's the same team that ran Trent Grisham out there in his 170 batting average yep. every day for a couple of years because we didn't have anybody else behind him. Yeah, like, and we didn't have anyone. I mean, and it would have been much more justified to bench Trent Grisham than oh, it yeah, would be because to he wasn't Xander locked into Bogarts. an 11-year contract Correct. making 30 million. But still, the results and like were comparable. Manny it just hit. He's hit his way out of his slump. You know, he's still. Is he perfect? No, he's not four for four every night. Nobody is. Nobody. Nobody is. But he's hitting. He's hitting balls hard. You know, putting the ball in play. So he's ten game hit streak. Like he's hitting his way out of a slump. A guy like Xander Bogarts. I. I not. I want it for him because he's ours now, right? He hasn't had that big moment yet. He has not had that. Pro far, Will Smith, dust up, double off. He hasn't had it yet. Not even in a season plus, really. No. And, and he, in my opinion at least, he hasn't, I think this is fair to say, tell me if I'm off base, he has not been fully embraced, and he also, I don't think, is fully embracing where he's at. I don't. He had a big walk-off homer last year. I mean, last year was such a turd, Paulie. Just saying, like, just like the moment. Trying to think of the moment, like that is the moment, probably as yeah, of now. Yeah, and it just I want it for him because I do like him a lot, and, and he's he here, and he's here, he and I, I I feel like if you just keep rolling him out there, I think you're going to get some production. I see in the in the chat that we need to do the Phillies fan treatment I like saw, with Trey so, Turner. I don't think that Xander's really getting. You know, that not part moved. of treatment no. at Petco Park. I yet. don't either. And somebody sent me that. So, so somebody put that out last week as like a bit. And then somebody sent it. He goes, can you guys promote this and let's do it? I go, A, I don't want to hack their bit. Because that was a good bit they did with Trey Turner. And it was a radio producer. Came up with that idea. And they went out and they did it. And the guy started mashing. And A, I don't want to steal their thing. And B, I think the guy that tweeted originally was doing it as a joke. So I don't want to make fun either. Right? So I think Xander's going to be fine. It's, it's going to be tough for Xander to ever live up to his contract, bro, it's, and that's not it's not even his fault, his fault no, that he was no, offered it's that not. monster contract. It's not his fault, or that he accepted it. Fault. I'll let me get let me get my Robin Williams on with him. Bring him into an office. It's not your fault. <laughs> no, I know. No, no, no. You don't know. It's not your fault. What are you talking about, man? No, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Now you're just reminding him of Boston again. Oh, crap, dude. That's a good point. It's not your fault. That's a really good point. Maybe not, yeah. Damn. Crap. Damn it. You just nailed that. Uh, all right, we need a contestant for Take on Woods. Uh, we're playing in about a minute or two here. 833-288-0973. You can qualify for the trip to Las Vegas. See if you can take down Woods this week. Give us a call right now, 833-288-0973. Did mention, though, Padres made a move yesterday. Matt Batten was called up from AAA El Paso, and Brett Sullivan was sent back down to give – presumably the team an extra infielder a body in case Jake Cronenworth is unavailable for a, a day or two. So uh, Mike Schilt did address Jake Cronenworth's calf tightness uh, before the game yesterday. We're still in the process of figuring it out. Um, it's in a, it's in a you know unique spot, you know, because it's not necessarily the, the calf and it kind of leaks into the hamstring. But the good news is he walked out without any 
real discomfort yesterday and um, it's presenting pretty well today. It's obviously getting treatment. Um, so clearly we're, we're mindful and hopeful that, you know, it won't be a, a long-term situation, but we're still in the process of, of figuring that out. Do you have an estimation of when we might see him again? No, we don't. Like I said, we're in the process of figuring it out, but we're, um, we're taking it, you know, literally day by day. It's not super encouraging. Yeah, but it never I mean, is. The, the worst would be, hey, he's right on the injured list. We know he's not going to be back for a while. They didn't do that. so They did make the move, though. That's Yeah, but not concerning. with him. They didn't make it with him. He's still, he's still, on. He's still yeah. on the roster, which yeah. means they think there's a possibility he could be back sooner rather than later. If they decide that's not the case, then I would imagine they will put Jake on the IL. Now, he said he was walking okay. He was not feeling it that, but I don't know what the bleeding of the calf into the hamstring Sounds kind of concerning. It's it's a muscle or it's another muscle or did you strain or two muscles that are tight now? There is certainly some cause for concern there. I'd imagine we'll have a lineup fairly soon. Yeah. So we'll we'll find out. You know, not expecting Jake to be back in there. You got a day off tomorrow. You got a built-in three straight days off. You can give him if you don't play him in the game today. So I would not I would not expect to see Jake in the lineup today unless he's feeling. Pretty perfect. Like, no, can't feel it at all. Everything's fine. And and that would be great news. But otherwise, I would say the earliest we'll see him back again is Friday at home. And if they can't get him by then, then you start thinking about, okay, in, injured list time. Yep. Retroactive to yeah. Tuesday exactly. or whatever. Okay. I all hope right. that's not the case. All right. That's your update on Jake Cronenworth. Now let's get to today's game. It is time to play Take on Woods. Robert will be our contestant for Take on Woods today, brought to you by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. It only takes 15 minutes, and you don't have to get out of your car for directions and discounts. Go to SoCalOilChange.com. That's SoCalOilChange.com. Robert, good morning to you. Good morning. All right, let's see if we can get you qualified for the trip for uh, two to Las Vegas at the Westgate and tickets to Cool and the Gang. Tickets are available at Ticketmaster.com for their 2024 residency. Here are your categories today. Royal titles, five song titles or artists that include a British royal title in their name. Going up, five song titles beginning with up. And fire and ice is our new category. Those are musical artists or bands, either with fire or ice in their name. Robert, royal titles, going up or fire and ice. What would you like to play? Let's do going up. Going up. All right. Today, we've got five song titles all beginning with up. You have 60 seconds. If you don't know an answer, you can pass. We can come back to it. First questions are two-second song. Polly's going to play a little music. You need to give me the title of the song and the artist to score that point. You go first. Woods goes second. If you beat or tie him, we will put you into the grand prize drawing for Vegas. Robert, are you ready to go? Yep. All right, Polly, you good? All right, category is going up. 60 seconds on the clock. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Robert. Let's take on Woods. Creedence Clearwater Revival. Correct. Pass on the song. According to Backstreet Guy Billy Joel, which 1983 hit was inspired by Elle McPherson, Whitney Houston, and Future Wife. Correct. Jennifer Warnes and Joe Cocker sing a duet in which theme song for the 1982 film An Officer and a Gentleman? Pass. Aztecs fans chant, we will be victorious in unison when Viejas Arena plays which 2009 song by Muse? Uprising. Correct. Uprising. Bruno Mars is the feature performer on which 2014 mega hit for British record producer Mark Ronson? Uptown song. Correct. Back to our two-second song. Do you know the title? Pass. Up around the bend. Correct. Up Jennifer around. Warrens and Joe Cocker sing a duet in which theme song from the 1982 film An Officer and a Gentleman? I don't know that one. That's okay. Four is a really good score mm, in bad. your 60 seconds. The only one you didn't get was Up Where We Belong. But you got Up Around the Bend, CCR, Uptown Girl, Uprising, and Uptown Funk. That means the pressure is on Woods, who it's does not close. get the category. Yeah, this is, uh, I think this could be an interesting one. All right, Woods is back, putting on his headphones. Robert, stay on the line there. 60 seconds back on the clock. 
Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Woods. Let's take on Robert. It's, it's I'll pass. According to Backstreet Guy Billy Joel, which 1983 hit was inspired by Elle McPherson, Whitney Uptown Houston, Girl. correct. Jennifer Warrens and Joe Cocker sing a duet in which theme song from the 1982 film An Officer and a Gentleman. Up Where We Belong? Correct. Aztecs fans chant, We Will Be Victorious in Unison. V.E.S. Arena plays which 2009 song by Muse? Uprising. Correct. Bruno Mars is the featured performer on which 2014 mega hit for British record producer Mark Ronson? Oh, uh, uh, um, past. Back to the two-second song. It's like... Uh, it's, um... It's another category, C- it? I don't. It's up? Something up? Bruno Mars is the featured performer on which 2014 mega hit for British record producer Mark Ronson. Mark Ronson. Uh, up. Well, get get on thing. up. Nope. No. Back to the two-second song. It's... Last chance. CCR. It is CCR. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. But by a 4 3 score, ah. congratulations, Robert. You have taken down Woods to today. Crazy. What is the CCR? It's Up Around the Bend by CCR. Up Around the Bend. And it was Uptown Funk Uptown. by Idiot. Bruno Mars that song? <laughs> and Mark Ronson. Yeah, Up songs, all beginning with Up. But that is a win for Robert. Paulie will get your information job, during the break. Robert, you are in. Suck it, Robert. To the drawing for a loss. Vegas at the end of the month. Congratulations. Damn it. How do you miss Uptown Funk? Moron. Yeah. How do you miss, like, the, the biggest that, song? That might have been the song of the 2010s. There's no doubt. <laughs> There's no doubt it was. All right, we have a... Around, around the beer. DDT is next. Uh, there's some drama surrounding the last will and testament of one Orenthal James Simpson. I saw that. Get that coming up next. How about, uh, I don't know if you guys had to do do this, but what do we do every time Hassan Kim does something? Oh, awesome? oh yes. I don't. So that's this. perfect. There's perfect. the do do this as well. After traffic on 97.3 The Fan. We'll be right back.
Don't Do This brought to you by the Craft Taco in Sorrento Valley. The Craft Taco is some of the best quality tacos in all of San Diego. Go to thecrafttaco.com. Take a look at their happy hour specials today. The Craft Taco. Dot com. I'll get it started on Don't Do This Today. Shockingly, O.J. Simpson's longtime attorney doesn't seem to be particularly sharp at his job. <laughs> well, I mean, you how know, would that be shoddy? They got that, him off a murder rap. No, that's no, no, a that's different not attorney. That that's a different <laughs> attorney. Now, do you get into the legal business to become the attorney for a disgraced murderer? I don't yes, think so. Everybody has a right to but, defense. Yeah, but, I mean, this is more of his, like, Business attorney yep. guy, Malcolm Laverne. He's also the administrator for his last will and testament. Took him like one day after O.J. died to come out and hot with lots of hostility saying, the Goldman family, they're not getting a penny of O.J.'s estate. I'm going to stop it. It's never going to happen. Now, of course, O.J.'s estate owes the Goldmans from the civil lawsuit like $33 million, which, of course, he's never come close to paying mm-hmm. off. He's... Dodged a lot of it. He he became poor. Er, I mean, he he lived on. They set off his NFL pension. Yeah. in the later years, but he avoided as much as he could actually paying the judgment that was owed against him. Only took one day before uh, Malcolm Laverne had to recant all of his words <laughs> and say, "Okay, yes, we will follow the laws of the state of Nevada, right. which indicate that in fact the Goldman family will be." treated accordingly and and where they should be in the reading of the will and the testament and the assets. But I thought what was very interesting in in OJ's apparently in his will that his main heirs, his kids, that he put a provision in that if any of them contest the will, then they get cut out. They get just $1. So basically he like, like wanted to make sure that none of them said anything about it after he was gone. Would you do that? Like Cut your What's he children gonna do out now? of their will? <laughs> Would I cut my my children? Would cut me out of their will? That's right. They, yeah, they, <laughs> they are. I think worth more than I am. Um, I you know was it, that a pun intended? By the way, cut. Oh no, it was not intended. Um, that would be inappropriate. It gets gnarly, like when that happens. When somebody passes away, you know, and uh, that's always like it makes the death like, hey, not only do we lose our in this case your loved one, I guess, but you also like cool. Now we get to go to litigation about you know, oh, dad's old football jersey. You know, it just it's such it's so unnecessary uh, a majority of the time. And now this one though, I mean, how are you a turd after you, you're still a turd after you die? Like, hey, make sure they don't get anything. Um, but yeah, they they will get paid out by I'm assuming by his NFL pension. Now you have to divvy it up between his kids and yeah, the, the, the the attorney says OJ didn't die with a lot. Right. He didn't have millions and millions that that he passed away with. Right. But they'll find out for sure. The courts get yeah. involved now, so they'll determine it. They'll divvy it up. A and turn to the end, essentially. Move it on. Exactly. Uh, last night, uh, your beloved Lakers, Ben, were able to squeak out a uh, victory, and uh, this was interesting commentary. It was kind of making the rounds last night. Listen, uh, the microphone's on. Sometimes you say things that make sense in your head, but they don't really make sense when you think them through. And Reggie Miller was a little guilty. Uh, Lakers up 108-106, stepping to the line to shoot two free throws. 2.7 two two seconds left. Two-point two point lead. Yeah, two-point right. lead, 2.7 two right. seconds left in the game. Here we go. Here's things that you talk about on the bus as players. If he makes the first one, you're up three. Do you try to purposely miss the second one, knowing that they don't have a t- any timeouts? They have no timeouts. And they've got to go coast to coast, because as soon as you miss it, time is going to start as soon as it's touched. Or do you just make them both, be at four, yes. and game over? There you go. Th- I, it's not a debate. I, I get what he's no saying. Debate there. There's no debate. No. Just make the free throw. You don't miss that No, no, no. There is an argument to be made that if you have one a one-point lead, is it better to make one and miss one and get the clock going quicker? Because, you know, they could tie or win it anyway, but the, if, and especially if there's like less than like a second and a half left. Yeah. But when you have a chance to make a four point lead, you take the four with point like three lead. seconds. You always, you can't, there's nothing they can do about that unless you, you foul them. You right. don't touch them. There's Let nothing them shoot a three. You can, they can right. do Still about win that. the game. You would always make the free throws in that miss, situation. Not on purpose. Right. You just miss. You miss. Then the clock starts running and you're, you're fine. You're up three. Unless they chuck up a three-quarters court pass. It's unlikely either way, but it's more unlikely that the other team can do anything when you're 
up four. That was weird. I don't think that that was. I don't think from Reggie, one of the greatest to ever. Yeah, play yeah that the was game. weird. Well, and, and you know, if that's what the Pacers were talking about on the bus, you kind of know what happened to them. Uh, down now, the stretch again, Reggie the is the guy. What, how many were they down against the? Was it the Knicks in that playoff game when he like made three and 13. then they stole it and made three and it was like thirteen points? There's no like way you seconds. can come back from that deficit. So Reggie's kind of got well. I've done it before. He's got so different I, mentality. I've got a maybe. different mentality yeah. than everybody else. Thirteen points. In eight seconds, I think it was. <laughs> but that doesn't usually happen. Eight points in nine seconds. Uh, so, yeah, Lakers did win. They advanced. They will face the Nuggets in the first round in the 2-7 matchup beginning on Saturday. The Pelicans will play the Sacramento Kings, who eliminated the Golden State Warriors in Game 2 of the play-in tournament last night. The Warriors dynasty seems like it's uh, pretty much at an end now. And uh, the winner of that game will play the one-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder. The East games are tonight. The Heat and the 76ers, 4 o'clock, Hawks and Bulls in the 9-10 game at 6.30. All right, finally, do do this. D D mega do do. Pauly with an outstanding idea. Anytime ha Sung Kim <laughs> hits a home run, or anytime the Padres get a big home run by anyone now, we really love to find the play-by-play of the Korean guys who are calling the game back to, you know, Seoul, back to the fans. But for especially ha Sung Kim. But when he yeah. does when it, he does it oh and it's right down the God. line, and you know it's going to be fair or foul, this is going to be a good one. Tell me so. this doesn't make your day. This is this is the call. Kim <laughs> 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 소름 돋네요. 야, 자, 김하성이 오늘 웨이드 마일리공 좋은 결과. 그 좋은 결과는 홈런이죠라고 했는데 이래부터 또 폭발시켜줍니다. 네. Makes my day. I imagine a, a good conversation about whether or not it was going to stay fair or yeah. foul. Yeah, were you worried that it was going to stay yeah, fair? I, I mean, was, it was hooking. I, he hit it so hard, though. It might have been hooking around the pole. But it's like, it, oh. oh. <laughs> the, when they talk over each other at the beginning is my favorite. They just, they're like, we have no... We're not going to... Ah, 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 it's full conversation. They're both doing their own show at the same time. It's the best thing ever. When they just... And if I can picture their program director, their Korean program director, sitting in his office going, I've told you guys. I've told you guys. <laughs> ben, you have the actual... You're in the background just making noise, Woodsy, all right? And Ben, just make the call. Do the call. Ha Sung Kim drives one deep Baseball down the line is back. and left. Cheer on Will the Padres as fair? they host the oh, Philadelphia the Phillies it's over the weekend. Fair. It's out of here. It's for weekend gone. promotions like the and Padres, Padres house base. Presented by Noah Kombucha on Saturday yeah. night. Enjoy the live performances of oldies and new hit music <laughs> while sipping on select drink specials. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world. You two, you guys, you guys are killing me. Okay, sit down. I sit like, down in my I feel office. like they're both doing play by play at the same it's time. It's the greatest. Like there's a deep drive. Yeah, it's oh, really deep. That. He really is he gonna stay fair? I don't know. It's gonna stay, stay fair. fair. It's it looks, right down the line. Hard. Is it gonna be a home run? It is. It is a oh, home run. My favorite. <laughs> I love it. And then the the they come together <laughs> in the oh, like it's brilliant. It's and brilliant. that's don't and do do this for a Wednesday. That. Was Don't Do This with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. Had some more drama in Major League Baseball last night. Did you see the end of the Cubs and Diamondbacks? That was one of the wildest no, games I of missed the that, season. Uh, entirely. Yeah, you were probably asleep. I then. was, was dead asleep. Pretty late one last night. Uh, got an update on the rest of the NL West. Uh, Dodgers okay, as well. Padres lineup. And we got a Padres lineup. All right, so an early game, early lineup. All coming up next with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan.
You listen to Sam Levitt's podcast, Insights at San Diego Baseball, covering everything going on with the Padres and 97.3 thefansd.com, the Odyssey app, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's glary in there. Is that Sam Levitt? I believe that is Sammy Levitt. Oh, yeah. ready for the Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame show. Look at that handsome SOB out there. In one hour and 30 minutes. Padres and pancakes. Padres and pancakes and brewers. Oh, Beer. My. Beer and pancakes. And not a good combo. <laughs> Me and Paulie were talking about that yesterday. Like, I like a cocktail. I don't like cocktail when I eat food. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't you like. You want just the drink before dinner. Oh, I love a cocktail before dinner. And it may, wine is like the only exception, and it's at a very nice place with a steak or like Italian food. But if I go but to. But even then, I still need at least a water. You got to get a water. I always get like a soda, too. <laughs> you do too, Diet Coke. To we'll eat with down, your steak and mashed potatoes. Ask for drink orders, and I will say, yeah, we'll get some waters for the table. Old fashioned. I will have an old fashioned and a diet coke and a diet coke. <laughs> Usually, Megan will say, "I'll have a diet coke or something." I'll have one I'll be like, you know what? Bring two. When I go to breakfast <laughs> with my kids on the weekend, I'd like a uh, apple juice, a coffee, a water, and I'll do a coke as well. <laughs> the guy's like four drinks. Uh huh. Yeah, I really like the drinks. My wife can sit and eat a meal without having any liquid near her. Colonel Budget says the drinks are always the most overpriced. That's how they get you, dude. Item on the menu. That's how they get you. I mean, like you go to a fast food place and a large is now three seventy nine. How much does it it's cost? Not the most expensive thing on the menu. Though. It's not the most expensive thing, but r- relative to the cost to the restaurant, where that Sprite that you're filling up is that large nickel? cup is oh, yeah, probably the, the worth like five is... cents. The Some markup kind of nickel. is absolutely ridiculous on drinks. Have you ever ordered juice at a breakfast place now? It's like nine dollars so for orange juice. I, I'm terrible because I you asked me a good question driving in this morning. And it was what we were talking about, what were we talking about? The 80s or something. And you said, what would you like to have be the same price as you could go back one thing and make it the price one it was thing. when you were growing up. And take out the big things. Take out homes. Sure, it'd be nice cars, to buy a new yes. house for $23,000. Yeah, gas is fine. Gas, you could choose gas you if choose you want. You could choose gas. Yeah. 99 Done. cents. <laughs> Done. You know, but. You kidding me? Drinks is a good one. It's not bad. I mean, you're, like you just said, I don't know. If I want a Coke, I just buy a Coke. I don't, like, labor over the cost of. It Paul, would, you like to go out to eat. Nice steak dinner. You and Megan yeah. go out for like seventy-two dollars at yeah. the end of the night. Back in like the day, two fillets, my dad baked potato, a, everything, all the fixings, the works, and I bet the bill you, comes at the end of the night. Here, seventy-two dollars for everything. I bet you bad. a family of four back in nineteen eighty-three at a nice steakhouse was probably eighty bucks. Yeah, 80. yeah, yeah. Now it's eighty for the just the steak. Yeah, boy, you go order it though, don't you? Because you want it. That. That's how I mean, get you. Supply it, and demand. You at least feel like that item, while it is marked up, even at the butcher shop, like the raw steak yeah. you're buying is now, you know, the good stuff is you know thirty to forty dollars a pound sometimes. So yeah. you know they're marking it up, but the drinks they're marking up ridiculously. They, yeah, they, they get you on the drinks. Does not it's cost right. you four ninety five for a Coke to buy that out of a soda fountain. I still so. get it. All right, uh, we are going to check traffic, and then we will bring you the Padres lineup against the Milwaukee Brewers for the series finale. It is out, and it is coming up next here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Traffic is sponsored by Viejas Casino and Resort. Just a couple of problems here, guys. A crash out of the South Bay, north side of the 805, just past H Street. Those vehicles are over to the right shoulder, and collision on the coastline, South 5 near Santa Fe Drive. That's over to the right shoulder. The daily jackpots at Viejas Casino and Resort are on fire. Players have hit huge wins with bets as low as 50 cents. Check out their jackpot winning smiles on the Viejas Facebook page. Want to join them? Who knows? The next jackpot winner could be you. Viejas Casino and Resort. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Now, the one thing that I have not been able to find yet is who is actually going to be starting today's game for the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah. It still says TBD on the Brewers website. I He's good. Their, He's got good stuff. Check their reporter who covers them from MLB.com. Nothing. He hasn't tweeted anything. The Brewers haven't put out a lineup of any sort. Big secret. That I have noticed yet. But Mike Schilt says, I don't care who we're going up against. I'm going to put my lineup out anyway. I is that know, smart or I is it not? Know, I already know who I want in the lineup. Yeah, you can't. It's not like you can sit and yeah. <laughs> You can. You, you actually you can, can wait until they name a starting pitcher before you construct your lineup. Kind of a baller move. 
I don't care what you throw out there. We're gonna get now, you anyway. In in Mike Schilt's defense, it's almost certainly gonna be a bullpen day. So you know you li- don't <clears throat> tailor your lineup against a starter who may only go one inning mm. or two innings at the most. You know, it's funny. The last time we said the Dodgers were gonna throw a bullpen day, I'm pretty sure he went six on us. I'm like almost positive. So stranger things uh, have or happened. it could be the uh, opener. Dodgers did that last night where they had the opener go two and then uh guy came in and threw five yeah. after that. So you do see that nowadays, and you probably want to tailor your lineup to whoever you think is going to throw the most innings yeah. against you. But here is the lineup today against uh, TBD of the Milwaukee Brewers, 10-10 first pitch. Sander Bogarts back in the leadoff spot, playing second base. Fernando Tatis Jr. batting second in right field, and once again hitting third for the second straight day. Jurek's in Profar, but he's back to his usual position of left field. Manny Machado, DHing and batting cleanup. Hassan Kim will bat fifth and play shortstop. Jackson Merrill is your center fielder hitting sixth. Tyler Wade will be at third base batting seventh. Back from AAA and on the San Diego Padres making his 2024 season debut, Matt Batten will play first base today and bat eighth. And behind the plate batting ninth will be Kyle Higashi Oka for your San Diego Padres. Makes sense. Makes sense to, uh, you know, again, you you're never – you never want to punt games, and this is certainly isn't a punt. You still have Bogarts, Tatis, Profar, Machado, and Kim, and Jackson Merrill all in there. It's not a punt by any stretch, but it is important to get Higgy work. It is important that you called Matt Batten up. Like, uh, that's not surprising in any sense of the word. No, I'm not Higashioka surprised. Higashioka no. catching early a, day game early after night game. Not even That close. happens almost every time. Yeah, not even close. So, yeah, great. Go get a win. By the way, the Brewers, but when you win- the Brewers may have some of their backups in on a day game after a night game as well. But when you when you win the first two, boy, it makes that, that lineup a lot more palatable, doesn't it? Not your best lineup, but it makes it a lot more palatable after you win the first two. Now yeah, you want, but, a, you you know, want yeah. the sweep, you want to keep it rolling. Padres won the series against the Dodgers on day three, not yep. on day not on day two. Doesn't matter how you do it. Well they had their they had their weaker lineup on day two. That's the day they sat Xander Bogarts. Right, and yeah. they still won the series. Um, you know, it's just as palatable that way. But I do think um, you're going to have to string together to really make some inroads in the standings. You need to string sweeps together. You know, you need a six- or seven-game winning streak at some point. Absolutely, We didn't man. see that until September last year. Winning series is great, and you'll hear Mike Schultz say that all the time. Hey, goal is just to win series. But it takes a lot of one series. If you just win two out of three, even if you do that five straight times, you're only five games above 500. And that's not, then, then you lose, then you get swept once and you're back to two games above 500. It's a lot of work. You know, when you sweep, you can make, you can make things happen very quickly. And that is, you know, that, that would be the goal occasionally. Now, I'm very happy with uh, where the Padres are at this point. Their schedule. They've played the Brewers, who have gotten off to a hot start. The Cubs, who have gotten off to a hot start. The Dodgers, of course. And they took series from all three of those teams. That's great. Padres don't need to be necessarily dominating early in the year, given the difficulty of their schedule. But when the opportunity presents itself to sweep a series, you want to take at least a few of those as they go forward. First chance to sweep a series today. You know, and I hate to do this to them every single day, but it's just kind of the nature of our job and what we do, right? It's like, all right, you showed me something yesterday. You showed me yesterday that you could get out to a hot start. You showed me that you could hang on to a lead, and you showed me that you could add on late. Now what do you want them to show you? A sweep. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> so that's the that's the, the and a four game winning streak. That a four game winning streak. Yeah, that's the um, that's the nature of this business. The nature of being a fan too. Great. Yesterday was awesome. Do it again today. And if they don't, you can bet there's going to be a lot of fussy people tomorrow. I may be one of them, depending on how they play. Some days you just get beat, but it's it's a little bit unfair to do. Hey, you won the series, but I also don't want to rest on. Eh, we won the series. You know, I I, I think that mentality kind of seeps in, and but. You know, you win more series than you lose, Ben. You're going to have a pretty good year. Yes, you will. Yeah. But if you never sweep any of them. Correct. You have to win, You have to always win series. Correct. You, you know, the best, the best way is, hey, win series as many as you can, and then sweep a few so that when you lose two out of three, which yep. will, every team will do, yep. then it doesn't hurt you that badly. You're just giving up one game, whereas you just picked up three. All right, I do have a... a, a A Brewers lineup. I still don't see a pitcher. Not pitcher listed. But uh, I've got a lineup here. Uh, Fralick, Contreras, Bowers, 
Adamas, Dunn, Hoskins, Terang, Churio, Perkins. Most of the same players we've seen first two games of the series. I still do not see a pitcher listed for the game. They are really, Pat Murphy's really taken this to the extremes before he names a starting pitcher for today's game. Yeah, la- last night uh, went 10 innings, uh, like three hours and 30, 40 minutes, one of the longer games in baseball so far. The uh, Cubs and Diamondbacks played an absolute epic. The Cubs scored six runs in the top of the seventh to come from behind and take an 11 to 8 lead over the Diamondbacks. But then the Diamondbacks scored one in the seventh, one in the eighth, and one in the ninth to tie the game at 11 and then scored one in the 10th to win it uh, 12 to 11 and steal that game last ah, night. Damn it. In a, uh, well, I'm scoreboard watching right now. Yeah, the Cubs actually Cubs. have a better record than the Diamondbacks right now. You don't. You just don't know you at don't the end know. of the who's, year who's which, team, be? which team you're competing against. So Beat the crap out of each other, you know, I guess. Early in the season, it, it doesn't really matter. You'd like to stay ahead of the Diamondbacks, and, and the Padres are uh, a game ahead of the Diamondbacks for second place right now in the National League West. And they remained one game behind the Los Angeles Dodgers, who uh, finally got another win. They beat the Washington Nationals yesterday 6-2. Uh, to Two was the final, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they had their new prospect that they brought up, Andy Pajes, who actually got a hit on the very first pitch he saw, which surprised the Dodgers broadcast team going, yeah, I mean, you're going up there. First time ever you've been up in the I'm, big leagues. I'm not taking a pitch. You're not taking not, one? No. Just there is no chance. Get comfortable. Bro, I'm hoping. I'm hoping for a six hopper to the shortstop. I'm hoping for a rollover. I'm hoping for a lazy fly ball to center field. But I am not going to stand up there. And Get watch in the slider O two and ass out swing. No, I'm going up there hacking. Would you go up there and wait? Get your I, pitch. I oh I, my god! I want to no settle in for one oh. one pitch at least. Yeah, he throws you a 96 mile an hour fastball. You stare at it, and then what's he going to do? Snap, snap. You're done. <laughs> you're walking back to the bench. I'm getting up there and I'm hacking. We got the uh, uh, report card for one Angel Hernandez last night. Not that bad. Maybe the best game he's ever called. <laughs> 90% overall accuracy. 91. 90 isn't great. 91 for him, it's okay. For him, it's for him, fantastic. It's, okay. it's like when I would get an A on something every now and then. 91%. I mean, the good umpires are, you know, in a good game. Yeah. They're 97, 98. 90's not, not terrific. Now, his most impactful missed calls all came early in the game, which is kind of what you want. Bottom of the third, Cease to Ortiz. Top of the first, Miley to Merrill. Bottom of the third, Cease to Ortiz. All went against the Padres. Uh, called ball accuracy, 92%. Called strike accuracy, Ben. 85%. Average is 88 Now, I pointed out that there is, uh, for every Angel Hernandez missed call, and there will be plenty of them, there's a 50-50 chance it does help your team. It, and there's some some did early. They did, absolutely. The Bach call, I still don't exactly know what was going on when uh, Luis Camposano looked like he got picked off. And yeah. He called a Bach from a position where... If he if it truly was the leg kick was like broke the plane, that's the first base umpire's call, yes. not the home plate umpire's call. So that was a weird one from Angel Hernandez. The check swing too, remember that? Like uh, Xander, I think check swing and did not he did not ask for help. He'll be uh, Angel will be at third base today based on the normal rotations of umpires, which seems like the spot where you can least affect a game. He's the, the you Over say that, knock on wood. You can, knock but. Knock on wood right now. You can, but you don't You don't have the constant, you know, first base calls that yes. the first base umpire does. Yep. The check and swing, the, too. Yeah, you do have the check oh, swing call the check at swing third too. for on, on left-handers. Yep. No, but no. Oh, boy. You, would you say second base is then a less impactful umpire or the third base well, umpire? Well, with replay now, you know, if it's it's close play, yeah. bang, bang play. But, man, he thing about Angel is not that he misses calls. He also rips the mask off and starts walking towards you. He's an instigator. He didn't throw out Jerickson when he got mad, and I thought perhaps that would be a problem. Jerickson definitely kind of did his arms like up in the air, like when the ball was outside. It was close, but it was outside. And I told Hannah, she goes, that ball was out. And I go, babe, it was pretty close. That's nowhere near his most egregious miss. And I said, does that not tell you, though, how good these guys are? But do you you know who the best umpires would be? If you could robots, no, if you, well, <laughs> robots, yeah, that's true. Good point, Polly. Uh, if you gave players all truth serum, though, them, and they if would if be batters could not tell a lie. They they are almost always right. Like when they lay, let one go it's and scary, it's outside, dude. And they look like, dude, that was yeah. a ball, and it's usually a ball. It's I mean, think about guys like that. We've seen Manny Machado, Juan Soto. Yeah. Like Bro. if they aren't swinging, it's not a strike. I don't think it's, it's a strike. Not a strike. They do. It, they will like sometimes Manny will take one. 
where he's like, he looks back. I'm like, bro, it's right down the middle. They do that, and I think it's more for effect. I do too. But I, I, if if push came to shove, like you said, if you had truth serum in them. If they had to call their own games, I think it would be better. I think at least balls and strikes. I think it would be pretty it. good, man. <laughs> they know when they they know when they're out, and they know don't when give they Rob should be walking. Manfred, any ideas? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Oh, you mean I don't have to pay umpires anymore? Yeah. Uh, also in the NL West yesterday, the Giants lost again to the Marlins six to three. Old friend Ryan Weathers shoving against the Giants, six innings, ten strikeouts. <sighs> Lowering his ERA to 2.70. What what did they do to Ryan Weathers in Miami? My goodness. Skip Schumacher effect. Apparently. <laughs> Congratulations on that performance. All right, we'll come back. We have got one hour left going to an early Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame show. Brett Boone is going to join us in our final hour, host of the Brett Boone Podcast. And much more. Ben Woods on the way on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Oh yeah, we are halfway. Oh no, we're not. We're two thirds of the way done. I just, it just hit me. We only have an hour left. This is what every other sports radio host in town feels like. Just an hour left. Feels great, right? Almost not, done. Not mad at it. I'm not mad at it either. Not mad at Good it. Good to be here with you guys. Three game winning streak. Uh, on the line for our San Diego Padres today, taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. Still no starting pitcher. I, we've been digging for it. I can't find it. If anybody has it, please put it in the chat or tweet us. I haven't seen it yet. I was thinking about texting the skipper, Mike Schilt, and I said, I don't want to bother the guy. The guy's having his his eggs and whatever and reading his Cardinals manual and figuring out how to win fourth game in a row. You know, I don't bug the guy. The guy's got work to do. I don't like to be bothered pre-show. What's up, my dudes? How you doing? Hey, we're good. We'll tease it for the Eco Water SoCal pregame show. Sammy, Sammy he'll, have it. he'll have news and info for you when he comes on the air in just over an hour. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle, the executive producer. Ben Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor, joins us as well. And the uh, the ideas were flowing yesterday in the Ben and Woods group text. Me, Ben, and Paul. We have that one. We have one. Me, Ben, Paul, and Adam. Adam is not privy to our our. Uh, brainstorming ideas, mostly because he would probably have run with one that our beloved Ben suggested. But Ben wanted to text us yesterday because you got a kick out of something. So I wondered, I, so I was driving to work yesterday. And first of all, let me ask you guys a question. Have you ever bought a license plate holder, like one of the novelty license plate holders for your cars? Never. Or do you just go with whatever, like, where you bought yeah. it, the, the I, car lot, the dealership, wherever, just put on whatever your car is. The standard, holds, always. Your license plate, the standard one in the back. But you Megan's know, car has a Padres one, but it was given to us. I didn't cat. go out and buy it. Right. Did you have to install it? Yeah, I mean, screwdriver, yeah. I know some places, well, I do, probably. <laughs> like if you donate to your school, sometimes yeah. they send you a like a personalized license plate. Never put one on. Holder. Never been a big Sometimes, sticker like, or holder Sometimes grandkids get like world's best grandma. Yeah. You, you get some of those. You get like his gifts from family members. Yeah, and you're you forced to put those Obligated on. to put them onto your yeah. car. But they're kind of a statement. Like you're putting that, you're making that decision. That's what you're showing to the, to the world, whoever's behind you in traffic on sure. the freeway. And I was in a little traffic going through the downtown S-curve. Uh, you know the S curve downtown. They yeah, call it yes. S. Yeah. That, yeah, the S curve. The S curve like, downtown. You know what an S curve is? Yeah, it's kind of where you get off at 10th Petco Park. Yeah. And you're going down. Yeah, to the, I know the S curve. It turns. It turns the other way. It's the yeah. S curve. And the car in front of me had a personalized license plate holder, and I noticed first the top was just four letters. And that's the first thing I noticed, and it was a little shocking. The letters were M, I. L, F, for the four letters. No. Even I know what that stands for. But then the bottom. I don't. Could you fill us in? Well, according to this guy, it says, man, I love fishing. <laughs> we got such a kick out of this, you guys. <laughs> like Bo. Like Bo. You know who else would get a, a kick out of that once he learns what MILF is? <laughs> Bo. Oh. <laughs> he got so excited. He texted us. Man, I love fishing. Right. You've never had a license plate frame. The other idea that Ben had, and I... All right, I'm going to ask you this right now. Were you serious? Yeah. You, oh. Oh, that makes it worse. This, that, I thought you were joking, and this makes it absolutely worse. So he texted uh, the group thread <laughs> yesterday, my beloved, my beloved, Ben Higgins, and said, video idea. And I said, uh, okay, what do you, what do you got? We all do the Jackson Merrill victory dance. And I wrote back, Ben. Paulie said, blink twice if Adam is with you with a gun. <laughs> and I said, sniff if McGuire is in the room. And Ben wrote back, ha ha. Now, it makes me happy. It always comes at a, a moment where you're in a good mood. And then he starts doing his, it's like his the, dancing out in the... Oh, he's doing it. You look like the Silence of the Lambs guy. Is what you look like right now. <laughs> Just tuck it back. That's what you look like. Oh, wait. <laughs> is he a great big fat person? <laughs> Not anymore, thanks to SD Fat Loss. Uh, look at him. No one's really done anything with it yet. It's a signature move. For good guy. reason. He already has a signature move. It's but 20 degree. games into his career. It's a dance. It's the gritty, isn't it? Yeah. 
Is that I, what that is? Yes. Oh. I can't do the grid. Oh, there he is. Live in person, my friend Ben Higgins. Oh, wait. Put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Precious. And I said, I go, I, we're not doing that. Because remember, first of all, Adam, it, that's an Adam idea. Remember when Dak Prescott did that warm up and he said, hey, will yeah. you guys do it? And we said, mm -mm. we've been here for like three weeks. And he goes, Dak Prescott did that. He goes, we'll do video content from it. I said, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't like manuf like video stuff. It just got to come I will natural. admit, I thought that maybe it was an original dance. I didn't know that that was already a, the gritty. Like, it's not. He didn't invent his new I thought he invented a new victory dance. That makes Padres. more sense then. If they, yeah. Would suggest I thought it. he, like, invented something I do like new. when they come together at the end, they put their hands up and they put them down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jackson <laughs> Merrill. Oh, wait. Mm. Oh, Frederica Vimmel? Uh, I think I have her card in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel bad crapping on his ideas, but I really don't feel that bad. But I feel like you need a buff, like a filter. Well, it makes me happy whenever I see Jackson Merrill doing me that too. dance. Well, it if means he hits, the Padres just want a game. They just want a game. Well, but when they come together at the end, they put their hands up and then they put them down real quick. It makes me really there happy. There you go. Too. Maybe we can do that. Well, okay. <laughs> You want to do something? We'll do the thing. That one's cool. Okay, that one's cool. <laughs> Can we even it. coordinate that? I no, don't know. There's no probably doubt. not. There's no doubt. Probably no, not. No doubt. Well, uh, the, the other thing we need to stop doing too is we got to stop talking about stuff on the air, which is part of our job. <laughs> but stop, 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 talking stop talking about, about everything air. entirely. Right, fine. Yeah, just. That four-hour show that became a three-hour show is quickly going to become a zero-hour show if we stop talking about everything. We're messing around yesterday at the end of the show, and we're talking about uh, paintball, because Benny has never been paintballing before, and he's never been shot with a paintball. You never shot a paintball gun. And I said, well, that'd be fun to watch you, like, get lubed up and get your thing and get out there and, <laughs> you know, start shooting people and getting shot, and it hurts. You know, it's funny. But I, I've always said with Ben, I don't, too. I don't put those two sentences together. It hurts. It's, it's funny. funny. It's That's funny. not, I don't ever put those sentences but together. With you, you, there's so much you haven't done. So it's like I have a son, another son that I get to experience things with, right? And that makes me happy. I like teaching. I like teaching. And I, I or showing, you know, introducing. And I said, uh, it'd be fun to get out on the paintball course. And then people said, oh, yeah, we'll do like tier ones. Hey, I'll do a tier one day, whatever. Well, I got the phone call at noon from Adam. He's like, hey, First of all, he started the conversation off with this. I answer, I go, hello? He goes, what's the matter with you? I go, what? What are you talking? You're calling me at noon. I don't want to tell you guys what I was actually doing, but you can make your inferences, okay? He called me right So you up. did potentially an, an answer the phone in an annoyed yeah, voice. Yeah, I have a limited time to myself in the afternoon. Right. Okay? So you were annoyed when you answered the phone. Yeah. And he asked, I what's wrong? Why? What's the matter? What's the matter? Said, Nothing. What? What's going on? Not No. He you then, were mad that he was calling you. He... <laughs> He, he wants to do, he's like, do you really want to do this? I'm like, yeah, I do. But I just, it was just something we were talking about. Yes, we can do it. Let's keep our eye on the prize, the baseball season, and we'll crush it. And then maybe after we'll do like a team building. And then he, then it, it started to spiral. He wants to do like something bigger and then it gets bigger and bigger oh, and bigger. Boy. And it just, I just said, yeah, let's hit it. Uh, after we win the World Series, we'll go and we'll do a team building event. And we'll shoot. It doesn't I, have to happen tomorrow. No, and the funny thing was, is like, I really, at the end of the day, I just wanted to shoot Ben with paintballs and let him shoot me uh. and watch you in all the gear. That's that's what brings me. I want You've you. You've already put me in lacrosse goalie gear. Take I'm you in. to a strip club. Yeah. I want you surfing. I want you parasailing. I want you base jumping. I want to see you do all of this fun stuff. Because I feel like you got shortchanged a lot. I'm saying no to base and bungee <laughs> jumping right now. That's not ever happening. Please bungee jump. Not I'm ever you. happening. I'm begging Paintball you. might happen. Paintball I, I could mean, happen. I could, I could definitely right. see that happening at so some point. Good. So, so good. But I love you, Adam. I love you, Ben. Keep those ideas flowing. One of them will hit at some point. We will get it, and it will be magnificent. What's the matter with you? What? <laughs> you don't want to know what I'm doing. Stop. If you call me at about noon, don't. <laughs> what about one o'clock? If you call me, don't. Three o'clock. 
three. What's, what's your schedule? Three after three before. Don't call me eleven before or after three. Uh, no, perfect time to call me is one fifty. That's when I leave to go get in line for school, and I sit and rot for an hour in the school line to pick up my son. That's my free time. So I always call Paulie sitting in the thing always. <laughs> Like, Paulie can expect between at 2 o'clock he's getting a call from me <laughs> as I'm waiting for Bo to get out of school every single day. That's when we do our catch-up and what do we got tomorrow and all that. But at any, any time before that, leave me be. I'm busy. Michael in the chat wants to know, did we ever hear more about the Ben and Woods Open? We have not made any announcements yet. You have not missed anything. However, anything. we are working on it behind the scenes and hoping in the next couple of weeks yeah. we'll have – the wherewithal to make some sort of official announcement on like a date that we can uh, officially announce for the tournament and for signups uh, to go into effect. But until until all of our T's are crossed and our I's are dotted, you'll just have to wait. Yeah, for sure. But as we said before, we're looking for early summer, uh, June, kind of in in that in that range. Bryce Wilson is your starter. Bryce Wilson, for the I knew it. Brewers, as I, I knew speculated. It. Bryce Tell Wilson. us about Bryce Wilson. I would be happy to do that. And I, as soon as I look him up, is the <laughs> like first. What side of the what side of the rubber he's a does right, he throw? He's from? a right, a right hander. Yep, he is a righty. He spells Bryce with an S. Bryce. Bryce. Bryce Wilson. Bryce Wilson. There's he something, is, uh, something didn't know about him. He's 1 0 with a 519 ERA. He's pitched in five games. He's not started a game yet. He's thrown eight and two thirds innings this year. He struck out 10. His whip is 1.038, Ben. He's 0, 0.0 war. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what his arsenal features. Let me look. I'll probably find that information for you. But uh, doesn't. Doesn't look to be, you know, it's not Freddie Peralta at the end of the day. It's he, a guy you want to go out and beat. three innings out of the pen in his last appearance, which was a week ago. So he can obviously be stretched yeah. out a little bit. Presumably, if they needed him to throw three, possibly four, you could get there. Wouldn't expect him to go like six or seven, though, in this game for the Milwaukee Brewers. No, do you like, and have you liked the offensive approach that the San Diego Padres have been employing of swing early, swing often? Because yesterday was a perfect example of when it works. Boy, do you look like a genius. Getting up there and hacking, and next thing you know, you're up 4 is, nothing. Is that officially the approach? It I know, feels like I it. know that you know, Mike Schilt has talked about, hey, if you get your pitch, be don't be afraid to swing at the first pitch. They also walked 14 times just two days ago. So they're also not just wildly swinging at everything. Right. That's always the best approach. Swing at the at the good pitches you can hit and let everything else go until there's two strikes and then you gotta protect the plate a little bit. That's not that's not some saber metric, you know, modern baseball wisdom that was gleaned through all the stats. That's that's how baseball's always been. You always are supposed to swing at the pitches that you can do damage on and then take the other ones until you absolutely have to you know, put something in play so you don't strike out and you don't risk I did it. But see a stat, no though. one ever wants to swing at a pitch that's a little off the plate when they're, you know, up in the count 1-0 and or 0-0. and I did see a stat, and I think it was last week, our buddy Tommy, who's so good with this this stuff, um, he tweeted something about, I had to look up if the Padres are swinging earlier, and they are. They are more 0-0 count swings this year uh, than, than in years past. And I think... I mean, I think it's paying off for them. Now, you go you go up there and you miss, and you roll it over. Cool, one pitch, one out. You go over and you miss, you roll it over. Cool, two pitches, two out. That, it kills you. But, like, last night, Xander, boom, 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 4 nothing. Nine pitches into the game, they yeah. were up 4 nothing. That's incredible. And when it works, boy, do you look like a genius. When it does, you look like a moron. And you'll be patient. Get up there and wait for your pitch. They can never win. They, 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 you no, will never you've been, win. you've been critical – you know, a bad at bat. Oh, it looks like bad at bats. Well, they look like bad at bats when you swing at that pitch, and it's probably a good pitch to swing at, but you happen to hit a three hopper to the short. That's shortstop. not a bad at bat. A bad at bat for me is two zero, and you do a swing and an ass out slider. That's a bad at bat. That's fair. That's but, fair. But you're also in two and zero. What are you doing? You're hunting a heater to just murder into the gap. And if he throws you a slider, you tip your cap. So um, I think the one for me, it was, there's one that sticks out in my mind. It was Xander, poor guy, just getting work today. But it was 2-0, and it was just a real kind of feeble on a pitch away and just kind of rolled it over the second base. And it's like, that's not the swing you want, 2-0. 2-0, you got to be hacking. You know, 1-0, you got to be hacking. And I feel like they're hacking a lot more early in, in counts right now, and they are they are doing their damage for, uh, with it every time. So it's been great. It's been great to see. I kind of enjoy it. All right. 
Let's take a quick time out. We'll come back. If you missed The Incorporator, we'll have uh, Jesse's payoff of yesterday's word, Aranaceous, for you. And then Brett Boone from the Brett Boone Podcast, always one of our him. favorite guests. He is back. Let's ask him with about, us. At, about bats. at bats. 100% hitting. Approaches, hitting approaches. Yeah, I, I, I always got the sense that Brett was a fairly aggressive hitter at the plate. Yep. But we'll see what he thinks. And the modern game, if he's changed his tune at all on that. That'll come up after a check of traffic. More Ben and Woods on the way on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Josh wants to know, Ben, if we wear matching glasses on purpose. I don't think they are matching glasses. Mine have a different shape than yours entirely. Yeah, yours are thicker along the side than mine. No, we don't do it on purpose. Somebody texted me the other day and said the three of you should wear matching horn-rimmed glasses and you could call yourself the Tri-Lambs. That's very mean. I can't see anymore, so I have to use these to read. But they bother me, so I take them on an awful lot. I've only worn glasses for the last, what, yeah, year, year and a half or yeah. so? And they don't bother me. I, they, bo- they bother the bridge of my nose. Occasionally, I'll adjust them a little bit still, getting used to them. It's like, a wet, s- like my wedding ring for like three years. I would just play with it constantly, and then it just kind of disappeared. Save him saying I would just play with it constantly. Constantly. Would constantly. you, uh, do you still have your glasses that turn dark when you walk outside? I you, wear those for golf. for golf. Yeah, those are my golf glasses. They have a, uh, like a clip, so they don't shake around at all when you're playing. You want to make sure they're... Because you have your head down, and you don't right. want glasses just falling off when you're playing golf. So yeah. those work well. Plus, you're outside and you know, get sunny, so you can. Yeah. It's not a really dark tint. It's just kind of a slight tint. I told you guys lenses. these are the worst shows ever. Yeah. They're three hours. The worst. No one's worse than them. Well, I mean, we could go to a Rindle report, except Paulie didn't do one. He didn't do one. Nine o'clock Bang hour. It. Right. I will say this probably would have made the Rindle report. Congratulations to Paul's. Former classmate who will be competing for a gold medal at the Olympics this year, Kawhi Leonard, named to Team USA. Pretty stacked lineup. It is a have. pretty good Always lineup. Is. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. LeBron. Maybe um, the most dominant. KD. I mean, it's not the dream team quite, but it's right. the it's the best of the best that we've got going to enough, Paris. I mean, I don't I don't know enough about like football, soccer, but like, can another country? Match in, in another sport be as dominant with the I don't roster. think so. I feel Euro- like uh, yeah, European Europe, the nation could put together, but country. for individual countries, no, probably like the not. Olympics. I mean, no, there's too many great players there's spread out. Spread there's across a lot the of world. good countries yeah. that you could put for baseball teams. Yeah. Now, unlike you see that in the world, unlike baseball when classes. the dream team dominated, other countries have really good teams now as well because there well, are it's an international superstar game. players around the world. But there's no roster that's going to match up with. LeBron, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Anthony Davis, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, Tyrese Halliburton, oh and Kawhi Leonard. That is a really good basketball team that are, they're sending. Are you guaranteeing gold? No, I can't guarantee right. gold. Okay. I can't. They're, the other teams are now good enough that they will have to also play well to win the gold medal. They're the favorites, no doubt. And we will wish them luck as uh, Coach Steve Kerr takes the team to Paris this summer. They're exactly 100 days out from the Paris Olympics today. Well, he's got plenty of time to plan because yeah. the Warriors knocked out last night. No playoffs for Steve Kerr. Maybe we can get him on. It's been many years no, since been a we've while. talked to Steve. He doesn't return texts anymore. I think anymore. he changed his number. You think so? I think I could email him maybe, though. Okay. Give Shoot him a few days. Yeah, yeah, give him a few days. Hey, 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 season saw, hey. Saw you got Free eliminated time? from the play-in tournament. Yeah, we could talk about that down the road. Love I to thought, talk about uh, that. I thought for a second you were going to congratulate me on wh- what I found yesterday while I was cleaning. Oh, oh yeah. there you go. Yeah. A little treasure uh, Dude, digging. This was unbelievable. So I was trying to find something. Uh, it was actually Ben's Christmas gift to me. Yeah. <laughs> and I lost it. and I couldn't find it. And I'm glad uh, you appreciated it so much. So much. You just tossed it somewhere you couldn't remember. Well, if it, for what it's worth... I spent days looking okay. for it. Like I, I really did want it. It was a two hundred dollar gift card to lose records, uh, and so at one point, I had them with me in the car because we were going to go and spend the, the money. Lose doesn't open until noon, which yes. is a little bit tough. And so I, when I realized that, I was like, it's not going to happen. So I thought maybe I left them in the car. I could not find them. They've been gone for a couple of weeks now, missing. A couple of weeks. Yeah, couldn't find them. I thought so- they'd been gone since. Christmas. No, I've I like had, oh, you I've had, had them, okay. and I, I was like, they got moved. I hope they didn't get thrown away. What are we gonna do? So I'm looking through Megan's car yesterday because that was the car we were going to take when we were originally planning on buying these records. I'm looking through the glove compartment. I'm looking under the seats. I can't find them. And when I go through the glove compartment, my wife's uh, Prius that she's had for eight years. 
I'm going through the very bottom of the glove compartment, under the user manuals, oh, yeah. the old the, registration sure. cards. The dre- like the yeah. dregs. And I see something, and I go, that looks like the back of a baseball card. What on earth could this be? And I pull out a 1988 framed or display case yeah, or whatever. in the hard case. In the hard case, a autographed 1988 wow. Tony Gwynn <laughs> baseball card. Incredible. And I go, what? the hell was this doing in the car how long has it been there i wait for her to get home from work yesterday i go what's this can you tell me why i found this in your glove compartment she goes oh my god doesn't remember how it got there um from the pinstriped brown and orange days pretty sweet dude she believes it was uh it was her father's Mm -hmm. late father's card and she thinks um after he passed he had some really good friends in their neighborhood, and he left some boxes of stuff to his friends. She's like, I'm pretty sure that card might have been in one of those boxes, and I got it back, and apparently I put it in my glove compartment. So cool. God knows how long ago. What a find. But yeah, I was like, this is awesome. I don't, uh, I'm not a memorabilia guy. Yeah. I don't know what like Tony Gwynn memorabilia is worth. That looks like it's in good condition. It's it's in its case. Yeah. It's, it's signed. I know Tony was very generous with autographs, though, and that generally drives the price down on some of those yes. but it's I mean, a sentimental that's oh yeah, yeah. Keep it. i'm not in somebody dm'd me i posted on my instagram story and somebody's like oh my god it's insane like do you know how much it's worth i'm like i i don't know this this new wave of baseball card it's, collecting it's over tough, the last dude. 10 I, years i'd say i'm trying to understand it and i can't i don't have any minted cards or i don't know what the grade is or anything like that i'm not sure it's in great condition it looks fine for me though it's gonna just sit, in sit our on, house the mantle, and yeah. on the mantle and and it looks great but then somebody sent me a comparable one on ebay it was like 200 bucks nice so nice yeah. that's Ooh. a uh, that's a true find if you get the, not if expecting. you get a pinch paulie yeah. actually if you get a pinch i'll give you 200 dollars. Right. keep your card woods might find right. chewing gum or something if he dug Old into his cinnamon rolls yeah. uh wrappers <laughs> in there <laughs> Not good. Four <laughs> packs of Reese's peanut butter cup wrappers. Papers, jammed in. Yeah. Little paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's quickly do the incorporator just because I promised it. We got Brett Boone coming up. This was the seventh inning last night. The word that Jesse was given was uh, arenaceous, which means looking or appearing like a hedgehog, yeah. I believe. A very yes. weird word uh, submitted on our YouTube stream, and he uh, nailed it with mud on Padres.tv in the seventh inning last night. Michigan guy. Michigander. There you go. Played his college ball at the University of Cincinnati. Bearcats. A lot of arenaceous animals up in this park. But your bearcats, your hedgehogs, your groundhogs, wolverines, badgers. I was going to say, oh, can't can't forget the badgers. Can't forget the badgers. Fantastic. Got the hedgehog in there, got arenaceous into the broadcast. And he uh, got mud playing the game that he plays with Tony on the on the broadcast as well. Where Tony, you know, he quizzes Tony yes. on college nicknames and mascots all the time. And mud was right there with the uh, Bearcats. Very nicely done. Mud, all right, mud doesn't miss a lot of those. Uh, Brett Boone is going to join us Boone. next. Host of the Brett Boone podcast. Talk some baseball with our good friend coming up next with Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, ninety-seven three, the fan.
A reminder to stay tuned for the Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame game show with Sam Levitt. Coming up next here on 97.3 The Fan. But that's a uh, next is doing a lot of work because we still have Brett Boone coming up. Sammy just popped his head in and said, We nearly had an incident. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Uh, when Nick, the uh, the board op for his Padres pregame show, walked in, saw our, our bean boozled jar. Yep. And didn't realize what it was, was going for it. Was going for a handful. Ooh, jelly beans. Free got a, jelly beans. Got a handful. Yeah, it was ready to go. And, and Sam, Sammy, stopped, Sammy him. stopped him at the last so second. Sammy's a nice guy. Because you would not have stopped anyone. You I would have wanted would have. to no, see I, what would I, happen. I've lived it. I lived it last. I lived it Monday. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone. My worst enemy, I wouldn't want them to eat a handful of those. I feel like I still taste bandage in my mouth. So um, You would have stopped him. I think I would have like stopped Sammy him. Did. I would have been like, bro, no, no, no. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Gonna... This is going to be the mistake of a lifetime. <sighs> They're so, it's so bad. All right. Padres are expecting large crowds this weekend when they welcome the Blue Jays to town. But very limited tickets remain for all three games. You can visit Padres.com slash tickets today. Got Brett Boone on the line. He will join us right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Got a couple of problems here. Westbound 8, right around Severin. There is a collision involving a couple vehicles there over to the right shoulder. The Cordell and Cordell traffic cam sees a couple of problems in the North County. Southbound side of the 15, just before Bernardo Center. Reports of some debris in the right lane. And there's a pickup truck over to the right shoulder. Might be a connection there. Further south on the 15, before Scripps Poway Parkway, we have reports of a stalled vehicle between the HOV and main lines. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fact. And we are joined right now by Odyssey MLB insider Brett Boone. Does that mean he'll be at the all staff meeting in uh, oh, that we were just found June? out about June? <laughs> you better be there. Uh, we got a big Odyssey you meeting. There. We will see you there. Insider calls are presented by Granger. Yeah, that's good. With, <laughs> with supplies and solutions for every industry. Granger has the right product for you. Call clickgranger.com or stop by. Brett, also the host of the Brett Boone podcast, featuring the most notable names in MLB and around sports each week. Uh, Jim Bowden, the uh, the former GM on The Athletic, uh, one of his latest guests on the Brett Boone podcast. Good morning, colleague, co-worker Brett Boone. Yes, I, I will be looking forward to the uh, staff meeting. I will have a lot to bring to the table. Yeah. A lot of input, a lot of uh, knowledge I've been holding back for a long time. So the- looking forward to that. Morning, boys. Morning. Morning. I know they have, like, hitters meetings and, you know, like, before the series meetings. Did you ever have to do, like, workplace meetings as a baseball player? Oh, yeah, right. Like, the normal stuff that we all have to, like, going through, like, the benefits programs and things you have to sign. Yeah. Did they have that for baseball players back in the day? No. That's the thing. Once you you become a big league ball player, the rules do not apply to you (laughs) any longer. Almost anywhere. (laughs) And, and and I'll tell you what, the day you you um well, you either retire or you get fired from big league baseball, all the rules apply to you. So it's it's quite the it's quite the shock when when you're when you're um Rude career, awakening. But no. Yes, as a as a as a big leaguer, believe me, nothing. Nothing. It's incredible. Did you so I, there, you know, there, there was a story that came out recently about Juan Soto, and I defended Juan a little bit because Juan Soto is a good hitter and knows kind of what he wants to do when he goes up to the plate. And you know, but apparently he wasn't really engaged in some of these hitters meetings. They were telling uh, some of the Padres hitters about tells, right? So if he does this, he may throw the slider here eighty percent of the time. Right, right. Soto was more kind of like, I've got my own plan, and it's obviously working for me. I don't need this information per se maybe you didn't go ra- about it the right way brett but i wanted to ask you m- it, the info you know the info that they gave you how were hitters meetings like for you were you into them were you not into them? Did you just want to go out see ball hit ball well it, it varied throughout my career when i was a young player i'd go in there and i, I want to listen i want to learn i want to hear from the guys that have been around the league for for years and years and have a lot more uh you know when you first get to the big leagues you you don't have you don't have a portfolio built up of, of time against these guys. By the time I'm, you know, late in my career and Roger Clemens is pitching tonight, you know, I might have some input in the, in the hitters meeting because I faced him 30, 30 times, you know, as a young player, I want to, I want to sponge off those older guys. Like, Hey, what's he done to you in the past? Is he doing anything different? So I was there just to kind of be quiet and listen. And yeah, it, it, it's like any, anything, as you get more experience and you have something to add to the conversation, maybe you can help a young guy. When it comes to Juan Soto, when it comes to 
big league treatment in general, especially a Juan Soto, an established, uh, you know, one of the best hitters in baseball. Yeah. As a teammate, you do whatever the hell you want to do. I could care less just when the bell rings, as long as you show up, do whatever you want. Don't go to the meeting. I don't care. And there, there's no, there's none of that. Oh, everybody's got to be treated the same. Not at the bit, not in the big leagues. It's all about winning games. Pick your friends later. You got to, you got to battle with, with 26 guys or 25, three hours a night. And I remember what sticks out to me is I, I went to uh, the middle of my career. I went to the Atlanta Braves <clears throat> and it was a, obviously uh, an organization at the time. Everybody knows the nineties Braves. It was, you win every single year. And I went into that. And Chipper Jones that year, who ended up winning the MVP, he didn't come out. He didn't stretch with us. He didn't come onto the field. He didn't take ground balls. He had his program where at he was, you know, when I got to the park every day, he was already there. So Chipper's there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon playing cards. He had a routine that he went through. He'd shower. He'd get into the cage about 45 minutes before the game. Him and Don Baylor at the time was the hitting coach. They'd go through all this this program they had. He'd get loose. He'd stretch. He'd run his sprints under the tunnel. Uh, he'd warm up by throwing balls into the cage. He'd step on the top step some days at 7 o'clock for a 7.05 game. And I had no problem with it because Chipper was carrying the mail. And, and he was <laughs> he put us on his back that year. That's so bad. And for any of my teammates that had a problem with it, like, oh, Chipper has to be out there and stretch. I said, why does he have to be out there and stretch? <laughs> what, what do we care? He shows up and hits a three-run homer. That's all I care about. Now, there, there's a catch-22 to that. If, if, you're, if you're hitting 210, and and you're at, you're on pace to hit six homers for the year. Well, you, guess what? You better do. You better get your butt out there and stretch with everybody <laughs> else. But as long as you're doing your job, this is the big leagues. It's not about this and about that. It's about bottom line. It's about results. If Juan Soto doesn't want to take certain things from a meeting and he's out on the field producing, more from my perspective as a teammate in that locker room, as long as he's not completely disrupting the entire. Yeah program which I, i'm hearing none of that i've got no problem with it just keep doing what you're doing talking to brad boone insider calls are brought to you by granger for the ones who get it done granger offers professional grade supplies and solutions made for every industry and backed by product experts click call granger.com or just stop by i want to ask you about hitting coaches uh padres uh, new hitting coach victor rodriguez has received high marks so far because well the padres are hitting well and scoring a lot of runs. But I, I kind of refuse to believe that the last, you know, 11 hitting coaches were all idiots who didn't know what they were talking about. And, and you see, like, professional golfers, they'll go through coaches maybe four or five in their careers and change all the time, a different coach for a different swing. And I've got to imagine baseball is kind of similar. Like, one coach doesn't fit fit all swing types on the major league level for a hitting coach. What was your experience with hitting coaches, how useful were they? How much of an impact can they really have on a team? I, I had 20 hitting coaches. I can count on three fingers. So that would be three. Somebody that could actually help me. Um, hitting coach is, the, I think, the toughest job in all yeah. sports. Because as you mentioned, Ben, when you're hitting well, man, you're getting high praises. Everybody loves you. And when the hitters aren't hitting, you stink and you should be banished from the earth. That's the way they are they're treated. And um, it's a tough job because you got, you got, well, for a particular roster, you've got 12 guys that you got to work with. You're not going to see eye to eye with all 12 guys. The best hitting coaches I've had were not the guys that taught the physical. You know, we all have different approaches. We all, to be successful, we all have to be in the same position when that ball's in the hitting zone. We all get there a different way. But the best hitting coaches I've had were the guys that could say something to me that would rattle something loose in my head. And he could go to another hitter and say something completely different and get a real positive result out of that. A guy for me that was great, his name was Lee Elia. And he was Lou Pinnell, one of Lou Pinnell's guys. I knew Lee since I was a kid. He was a coach on those 70s Phillies teams that my dad played on. So I knew him as a little kid. He came to Seattle and he would walk by me some days and he had that, we had a really good rapport. And he'd look at me, and he he knew I was in a in a funky place from from a hitting perspective. He said, "Booney, how you doing?" And I'd look at him. I'd say, "Lee, 
how the hell you think I'm doing? You've been watching my at-bats the last three days. And he'd say something, you know, this is what sticks out to me. He'd say, remember when we were in Texas a week ago and you did that thing with your top hand and you said that helped you? And, I, and I'd look at him like, yeah, I remember that conversation. He goes, why don't you just try that? And he would walk to the end of the dugout. <laughs> All of a sudden, I went from, you know, sitting there moping on the bench with no chance in my next at bat to, I've got a chance. Yeah, that's right. That top hand that we were talking about. So that's just an example of what hitting coaches are. They're more, they're more uh, mental coaches. They're more psychologists than they are the physical hit. Now, yeah, you need a guy that gets there. He's there. He's ready to work. That's all I can ask from a hitting coach. I'll give you a quick, quick another story. I'll, I'll try to make it really quick. Paul Molitor, one of the greatest hitters uh, in the game. Uh, love him. Hall of Famer. Love him as a man. He was our hitting coach in 2004 in Seattle. He came in. Man, did he work hard. He was there when you needed him to be there. Did everything he could. And at the end of the year, I had an okay year. <clears throat> and the last week, we're, we're doing our flips under the under the tunnel. And uh, Pauly looks at me. He goes, Booney, you know, I, could, I knew how to get a hit. I said, I know, Pauly. I watched you for a lot of years. He goes, problem is, I can't help you get a hit. And I, we both started laughing. It, it is really hard. You have to have that one-on-one. You, you resonate with some guys and you don't resonate with others. Um, but the, the bottom line is once you get to the big leagues, you're a big leaguer. All your, all your uh, growing and teaching and learning should be done by the big league level. You should be a finished product. And at the end of the day, once you step in the box, it's all on you. So hitting coaches come and go. But the best ones are the ones that, that can somehow psychologically get in that mind and just put you into a good, positive frame of mind when, you, when you're when you about to get into that box. That's, I mean, that's good advice for coaches at any level, uh, Booney. Talking to Brett Boone here on Ben and Woods this morning. And I uh, wanted to ask you, I think the, the Padres, if, you, if you've watched the, the 20 games, they're coming out, they're swinging. They're swinging early in counts. They're getting balls to hit. Sometimes, they, sometimes they're not damaging those balls. They're just finding some green right now, and that's – you know that's as important sometimes as hitting lasers, and um, you know they're living right right now. But it, it does seem to be a little bit of a, a change in philosophy of going up attacking early in counts. When last year, man, they would get themselves in some bad hitters counts, and and bad things happen. Did they drill that into you in your career, or what was your mentality like? I'm going up, I'm hunting first pitch fastball, and if I see one, I'm going to ambush it. Uh, Wizzy, that's all an individual thing, too. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to have a guy like a Juan Soto who's going to see the most pitches of anyone in baseball. Yep. That's Juan Soto. And, and then on the other side of the ledger, a guy that I played against and we watched for years, Hall of Famer, Vladimir Guerrero Sr., uh, he, he maybe walked 20 times a year. Pretty good results, though, from an offensive player. No and, doubt. and I remember when I worked with the Oakland A's in the minor leagues and, and, and they were preaching, hey, you, you need to walk more. You need to get your walk toes up. Well, that doesn't work. You're either a walker or you're not a walker. If you're a 40-walk guy a year, yeah, maybe you can improve on that with your plate discipline, control the strike zone a little better, bit better and become a 60-walk guy. But you don't, become, you don't go from a 40 to a 100. I never met a good hitter that went up there looking to walk. You look to hit, and as you get more experience and, and a little more mature in the game, you learn to, to maybe shrink that strike zone a little bit and, and stay within the zone a little bit more. But I've never seen a, a great hitter that changed changed what he was. If you're an 80 walk guy, yeah, you can improve on that, and maybe day one day be a hundred. But you're not going to turn Vladimir Guerrero into a hundred walk guy, and you're not going to turn Juan Soto into a 40 walk guy. Both their their uh, the results from both of their approaches works pretty good, and that's that that's that's all I've ever seen. That's my belief. You can't change a guy, and and sometimes if you're a low walk guy. And you really pound on them. You got to walk more. You got to walk more. That takes away their aggressiveness, and they become a shell of themselves. So I don't try to change anybody. Just get the most out of the individual because it's so individualized. Last thing for me, Brett. Uh, you know, there's some teams off to some really slow starts that you don't really expect are going to get much better. The, the Rockies four and fourteen. The Marlins four and fourteen. Not looking good. The White Sox. Just look abysmal. Two and fourteen. They've been outscored by fifty three runs. I know it's early, but I, what was the worst team you were ever on, and when did you realize like this is not this is who we are? This is not going to turn around, is it? <laughs> the 2000 well, Padres couple. weren't great. I remember that, but I, I hope that wasn't Padres the worst one. Weren't great. <laughs> uh, my 2000, 2005 
Mariners weren't very good. 97 Cincinnati Reds. As a player, we're eternal optimists. And the obvious could be staring us in the face where if we were anywhere other than in that uniform, on that field, representing that organization, uh, reasonable minds would prevail and say, we stink. But as players, believe me, that's all we got to live for. We get to the ballpark and we could start off 0 and 20. And, and we're going to say, hey, we're going to turn it around and we're going to win this division until it gets to the point where you're, you're kind of mathematically eliminated. You'd be, you'd be surprised that more, more than not, players on the field, you have to be living in fantasy land a little bit. You got to find a, a, a reason to believe, a reason to go to the ballpark and, and put on the uni and perform because some years it's, it's just the writings on the wall. You're not that good and you're not going to make it. But as players, you kind of have to be blind to that. Until, like I said, you're getting to a point where you're going to be mathematically eliminated. And then you got to find another reason to get to the ballpark and put up numbers, you know, and that, that becomes a very individualized thing. But, yeah, I was looking at that. There's some, you know, the Astros are picked so to, rough, man. you know, by most analysts. They're in the, they're in the basement. But, but teams like that, I think they're going to come around. Pirates off to a great start again. The Kansas City Royals off to a great start. So as much as there's some teams off to a bad start that we kind of predicted we're going to get off to a bad start, there's some that are off to some surprisingly good starts. So it's going to be interesting. It's good to see the Padres won five out of six. They're hot. They're rolling. Uh, this is a good ball club. This is a good team. I watched Dylan, or I watched Cease last night. He looks nasty. nasty. You know, he's given up a given up one earned run in his last two starts. Kind of becoming the horse of that uh, of that rotation. I think. But I think there's a lot of talent there. Musgrove. He's proven over the last three or four years when healthy. He's a real horse. Darvish is just a professional. You know, he's getting a little bit older, but he's he's just a pro. I, I have high hopes for King. I watched him a lot in New York. I think he's going to be really good. I think he's on the mound tonight. Yes. And Waldron's been doing a nice job. So, in uh, that bullpen, how about all those lefties? You got, from other than Suarez, Matsui Peralta and, and De Los Santos, they all got up around a one earning. So, they're, they're in a good place right now, doing a good job. One game out of, out of first place with those. Mighty, mighty Dodgers. It's been fun to watch recently. They have. It's been, a, it's been a delight to turn the game on, and you feel like you're never out of it, Booney. So we appreciate you, buddy, and uh, hope to get to talk to you soon. Love that insight. All right, guys. Thank right, we'll, you. We'll see you at the staff meeting. Bring donuts. Talk to you later, Brett. Uh, Brett Boone, our Odyssey MLB insider. Insider calls are presented by Granger with supplies and solutions for every industry. Granger has the right product for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. I'm not surprised that... You can never you never acknowledge the fact that you're terrible, yeah. even when it's staring you straight in the face. The White Sox are terrible, terrible, terrible. It's a bad and I get it. Team. I get it. it's not even the first month of the season, and there's some injuries as well. You, I guess you can always tell yourself, "Hey, we'll get healthy. Yeah, you know, things will things will look a little bit better in a few weeks when we get some of our players back." And then late in the season, when you're out and you're truly out of it. You still are playing for your own contract, your own baseball card stats, and you know you want to get the best deal possible the next time you're a free agent. So no reason why you can't go out and try to do a really, really good job. And even if you had 25 guys who are all just playing individually for themselves, might not be the best quote-unquote team, but you'd still win games if all guys are playing well for themselves individually because baseball is that kind of sport. That's exactly right, man. It's exactly right. So I loved what he had to say about Soto. I thought that was really and, – and Chipper Jones, I had no idea. Do you guys? No. The chipper was not, you know, the I'm not surprised. The, I, I, well, biggest I mean, prep team guy in the world. No, dude, no I mean, it surprises he, me. He 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 prepped, but he prepped his own way. Yeah. And you don't care as long as he's producing. Like you just yeah. like oh, cards. Bro, I'm not gonna say shower, it. Cards, and then 45 shower, minutes before the game and some take some swings. Some swings and throw against the that's wall. How, that's how you prepare for an adult league game, I think. Yeah, I don't even do that much. <laughs> I don't even do that. I just do none of that, actually. Uh, it is. It's it's interesting. And again, though, like the numbers always kind of speak the loudest in this game uh, that we love. So really, really good stuff from Booney. He's on fire lately. Yeah, I, I don't think I agree with him when he says there's no baseball player that's going to be so mad at a teammate who is constantly producing and helping you win. Correct. Even if, if they're, an they're not your cup of tea, even yeah. if they're, you know, a little bit of a – you know, in the clubhouse, they're not the yeah. best clubhouse presence. If they're on the field carrying helping you, you win, like you said, carrying you're going to be really happy about no it. No doubt. It's rare. I, who was the quote that I saw? The opposite. 
Uh, it was one of oh, the San Francisco, San Francisco, San Francisco was, Giants. No, I'd rather, it was Andy Van Slyke. Andy Van Slyke. Talking about Barry Bonds. Because Pirates, I'd rather yeah. lose than win with than him. Than win with him. That's a very rare sentiment <laughs> That's in baseball. That's about as rare as it gets. But, yeah, I mean, you have, you have to be a real jerk for somebody to say, I'd rather lose games than to win games no with kidding. you here. I mean, you're like, like the worst of the worst. It's the definition of a clubhouse That's cancer. That's the definition of one. So... Uh, I saw that yesterday too. Somebody had tweeted that uh, talking about Bonds. Uh, Barry Bonds was uh, was pretty. I mean, pretty tough. You know, Hall, Hall of Fame certainly in terms of unlikable guys yeah. in baseball history. Well, and certainly in ability, and talent ability. as well. Yeah, <laughs> talent I, and ability. I, I still I'm not denying that. I've still never seen anyone like him. But never as unlikable as a person. Not just not just media members, but his own teammates, mm-hmm. coaches, opponents. Pretty much everyone. Yeah, 100%. Disliked him. No doubt. During his career. No doubt. And not a surprise that Paul Molitor and Barry Bonds uh, was a hitting coach for a while. It's not a surprise that these guys can't break through. It's not, because they're so good at what they Tony do. Gwynn Tony Gwynn could never really yeah. break through with, with his players as hitting, at least the the instruction. You, you hear all the stories of his players yep. who go, just Tony, do like just this. do it like this. Just like this. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't work. We don't have I'm the, not Tony Gwynn. that innate ability that you do. I'm not and, Barry Bonds. And what works for you doesn't work for everybody yeah. else. But that's true in not just hitting in baseball. That is very true in golf as well. Sure. That a golf coach who can have an incredible success with two or three players takes another guy and goes, I can't do anything for you. Yep. Your swing, it doesn't work the way I teach. You're not a good fit for me as a teacher. Well, and the other thing, too, Victor Rodriguez is going to get a lot of praise right now because the Padres are, are hitting well. When they slump, who who are people going to look to? Of course. Victor Rodriguez. It's a thankless job. It's just a horrible, but, horrible job. But, uh, you know, some of those uh, failed Padres hitting coaches of the past went on and had success with other groups of players and lineups. Ryan it's not Flaherty's that, actually doing okay in Chicago sure. right yeah. now. It's, yeah. And it's not necessarily that they got better players so they look smarter. Sometimes it's simply – the right message for the right guys. And you don't always find that with every single team. All right, we've got the uh, Eco Water SoCal pregame show standing by. First, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification from our Odyssey studios here in San Diego. KWFN and KWFN HD1 San Diego. Tony Gwynn Jr. here. Get up to speed on sports news on your way home from work. Keep up with Gwynn and Chris weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.3 The Fan. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Business taken care of right there. Yeah, we have more business. Speaking of, yeah, speaking of business, uh, I've got to drive you again. Yeah. And I have to take now my car. It's very in cool. for, It's car week for Ben and Woods, mm-hmm. which means we got to get going as soon as uh, Sammy takes over. But we forgot to record our promo. We did. So let's just record our okay. promo. What's tomorrow, Thursday? Tomorrow's Thursday. Maybe you know Sarah's at 835. You probably hear them during the day if you yep. listen to just Annie and Elston and, and Gwen and Chris. It's a, like, what, eight seconds, Polly, we're trying to hit? Like, yep. eight seconds. And we're just telling you what's coming up on the program. Right. And usually I do a little bit, then you do a little bit. Yeah, I know how it works. And then and then we go. Ben's explaining a promo to me. I, yeah, I, no, I I'm, 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 I'm explaining it to the audience, it's not you. They hear it. I'm just explaining how it works. Oh, you're running out of time, though. All right, here we go. Three, Do the show, two. bitch. What do we got? Uh, 835, you know? 735, Adam Jones. All right. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Three, two, one. Coming up Thursday, a day late, but no. Is it... No, let's try oh, that again. For... Right. Three, this two, one. Every spot. <laughs> Coming up Thursday, a day late, but always appreciated. Adam Jones will join us at 8... Th- 730. Oh, my three, two, God. One. Coming up Thursday at day late, but always appreciated. Adam Jones will join us at 735. And Smart Baseball with Eno Saris at 835. Can make you? that work, Polly? Yeah. You, that, that's okay. You yeah. can make that fit into our Every time template does, that uh, we put in. Hey, it's been... Uh, hey, it's... Uh, three, two, two one. one. Hey, it's... Uh, uh, I love the <laughs> sigh. It's my... <laughs> I wish it was my ringtone. My phone ringing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, well, it's not so... live. You don't have to do it in one take. You can get it right. That's you can right. wait until it's perfect. That's that's the aim. Perfection is the goal. What time does this game start? 10 05? 10 10. 10 10. 10 10. Right. Get me home. Bryce Wilson. Bryce Wilson. Against Michael King is our pitching matchup. Sammy will have all the details for you lineups, the highlights of yesterday's game, the Mike Schilt comments, everything for you coming up. Uh, Momentarily on the Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame show. I think we, what do we need to fill another minute here, Polly? Another, another minute. minute? One more minute of content. Pee in my pants.
Don't do that. I'm this close. Ben and Woods on the fan. Coming up Thursday at Day Late, but always appreciate it. Adam Jones will join us at 7.35. And Smart Baseball with Eno Saris at 8.35. Listen to so Ben and Woods all weekdays from up. 6 to 10 on 97.3 The Fan. Yeah, the reason Adam Jones couldn't join us today is his flight back to the uh, back to Europe was delayed yeah. six hours, so he was still on the plane during our show today. He said he got a, bu- a buttload of credits, though. <laughs> yeah, the airline that he was with. I guess yeah. we can say United. United. Said, yeah. They did hook me up with some credits. Kind of bonus miles, points, yeah. whatever you Something. get when you're inconvenienced by the airlines. Hello. That was hot. All right. We've made it oh, to the God. end of a shortened show. Early. And we will be back tomorrow for the Thursday edition of Ben and Woods, even though it will feel like a Friday. Oh, to dude, and we'll make that hour back with our roundtable tomorrow. That's a good point. Yeah, we will be back for the roundtable from 10 to 11. Sammy is up next for Paul Reindel. Stephen Woods, I'm Ben Higgins. Have a great rest of your Wednesday from all of us here at San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Go Padres.